Good evening and welcome. This is the Chelsea Fancast. I am Stanford Chidge and I'm joined as ever for this occasional, once in a blue moon, little show that we do called In Off The Post, where we, we read your emails. And I am joined by the legend that is Jonathan Kidd. Oh, Chidge, how lovely to be described as a legend. Oh, if a oh, legend oh. in my own bathroom. A legend in your own lunchbox. Exactly. Thank exactly. You. How the devil are you? Uh, uh, fine, thank you. Had an interesting week. Thank you very much. Um, can't remember anything about what I've done, but it's been interesting. All I know, it's always interesting. So, uh, yeah, yeah I, I know the I know the feeling. I, I I was off last week, so I've been back at work this week, and it's it's God, I'm tired. It's Have you been doing the allotment? No, no, no. I've got I've got a big uh, allotment job this weekend. No football, obviously, because we're playing on Monday. Uh, yes. So I have got to construct um, a polytunnel. Wow. Which is what, something what, what like... What do you put in there? I shall be putting tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, melons, lettuce in the polytunnel. But it's about 15 foot by 6 foot. So it's big. I've got to do it on my own. Unless you want does to come it, down and help me. Is it, uh, does it stop? Um, uh, I think I might be busy. I might have plans. I don't, my, I don't my blame daughter. you. I might have You're plans. Washing, washing your so hair. It'd be something like that, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, I'm trying to think what else I did. I watched the uh, I watched the the Man City game during the week, and I watched the I watched four of the uh, the Champions League games, and I, I was the champions. Sorry, very good. <laughs> very good. It's very good. I think you pitched that beautifully, actually. Um, uh, and I was upset. Why? I was actually upset because I thought this used this used to be what we just oh, aut yeah. automatically got involved in, and right. I was upset to see large numbers of the players in teams that we played against, and uh, that was our level. These teams we played against were our level, and yeah. we are so far away from that now. And also sure. intrigued to see how many of our players are playing for these teams. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Players. I oh, know Christensen scored yesterday. Uh, Rudiger is a major player for Real Madrid. Yeah. Um, uh, we tried to buy Rafinha. He scored two goals. We tried to buy Kunde. He's regular for Barcelona. Um, we tried to buy um, De Jong. He's uh, he's a he's still top player. All these top players playing in European Cup quarterfinals. Um, uh, who else? Kovac Kovacic playing for the whole game at Real Madrid. You know, obviously hugely rated by. Um, by uh, uh, um, what's what's his face? Um, Poop. not the name of the Madrid manager, and uh, not the Madrid. Oh, oh, you mean Ma you mean Guardiola, don't you? Yeah, well, Guardiola, yeah, by Pep, and um, uh, and and several others. You know, just thinking, well, they were playing for us without any problem, and and it it all went tits up in a variety of ways, and yet here they all are still good players, and we oh yes, of course the other two, Jorginho and Havertz, yeah. Starting and playing, uh, and uh, Jorginho had an excellent game, and Havertz has now got into a decent role with Arsenal. Mm. So uh, it's wow. it's wank, isn't it? I mean, it's a bit like watching uh, your worst enemy shag your ex girlfriend. Mm. Not that I have to say that that's ever happened to me, but um, no, me neither. No, me, yeah, but nonetheless, as, as an image, it's uh, yes. it's me, the fourteenth Duke of Wyborn. <laughs> Definitely not me. It's, no. it's distressing. Yes, absolutely. I, I, okay, I'll rephrase it. I would imagine. Yes, I would imagine like, too. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. But it would take a very, very big stretch of my imagination to do that. Yeah. Um, but um, no, just the very fact that you know, a bit uh, we, only last season we were in the quarterfinals, and uh, only last season we were playing at these venues, and only uh -huh. last season we'll be going away to watch it, and we were playing against these very same players. And uh, wow, will wow. we ever do it again, JK? Hey, that's exactly what I was thinking. I mean, you know, joking aside, I mean, th this is why I broke down and cried when we won in Munich because I'd spent my whole whole life as a football fan, uh, never dreaming that my my team could even compete in this competition, let alone win it. Yeah. yeah. So it, you know, it's not as incredulous as we may think. Anyway. Yeah. As ever, do not forget you can watch the show live. Apart live, from live, from... Chidge, live. No, we're not doing it live. But anyway, normally you can watch the show live on our YouTube channel. Semi live, semi live, semi live, and uh, 
and Facebook page. And of course, listen to the show live. Live again. Every Monday and Friday at 7.30 p.m. by going to Mixler, which is chelsea-fancast.mixler.com, where, of course, you can join in the chat by posting on the live chat page. We're not we're not doing the the, the, the video version live tonight for various reasons uh, because it's in and off the post show. And, I, I, you know, J.K. and I we've got a lot to do with in off the post. So we're a bit, you know, we just kind of like to, to get in the zone for this one. This is not not one where we like to be live, basically, apart from Mixler, because that's different. Um, so there we go. Anyway, you can, of course, follow us on all the socials at Chelsea Fancast and listen and subscribe on ACAS, Spotify, Apple and all good podcast platforms. And make sure you leave us a glowing five star review. Uh, now, uh, I, as always, at this stage of the program, just before, basically, because otherwise I forget because I'm getting a bit senile in my old age. But we do have a Patreon account um, where basically people who like what we do bung us a few quid each month, which is very lovely of them. Um, and in return, you get no premium content. I one day I'll think of something, but until then, uh, you can have uh, a Kerry Dixon banner, a replica of the a mini replica of the one that hangs in Matthew Harding. And of course, you can join our Discord group, which is great because it's a bit like the chat room on uh, YouTube and Mixler and Facebook, but 24 7 find people in there. It's much better than X and all the absolute insane. I, I, JK, a quick aside, I, I'm getting just really hacked off with x I, I don't think i can really bear it much longer you know I, i'm i'm a bit inured from it i tend to not um i get any of that on my stream i don't know why i suppose it's because it's got a mixture of lovies on my stream as well so well it's... i just it's the football is that and it, you know it's uh, it's, it's enough to have all the right wing garbage you get, which the algorithms force down your throat. It's the football stuff that's bugging me now. It's just the mental Chelsea supporters on there arguing and whining about this, that, and the other. I'm beginning to just really get sick of it. Anyway, um, yeah, so maybe Discord is the answer for, for me more often than it is because they're all really decent people in there. Anyway, patreon.com forward slash Chelsea fancast if you wanna if you wanna donate a bit of money and uh, get into shit like I've just described. Now uh, the main thing, the main attraction is this at the moment. Uh, we have got these for sale. Oh, yes, and yes, and yes. These are the If They Sell Connor, We Riot t-shirts. The infamous If They Sell Connor, We Riot t-shirts. Uh, because they have clearly, judging by the way I got eviscerated on aforementioned X, they are boiling the piss of the right people. And that's what you always want to do. Boil the piss for the right people. Now, if you want to boil some piss... Get yourself a T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, all, all sizes, men's and women's available. You can pay via PayPal, use the friends and family option. Um, and the prices for said T-shirts are 25 quid, uh, including postage and packing in the UK, 28 quid in Europe, 30 quid in North America. Uh, and also uh, we have mugs. Yes, we've got these mugs as well. So you can have a, either a white mug or a, a mug with blue insides and a blue handle. Uh, they are 15 quid, 18 quid, and 20 quid uh, for Europe, uh, sorry, UK, Europe, and North America. The best, the easiest thing to do, either either, either you can, you know, basically you can either go and check out our, our website, chelseafancast.com forward slash category forward slash merchandise, or just email your order. So basically what you want, mug or a t-shirt, the size and your address, and I will start to process that very order and then we will get it into the post to you. It takes about a week or two, depending on where you are. Uh, so there we go. I mean, how lovely is it? Did you like? You, I think actually your your little medium one is has arrived in the post, uh, Mister Kid. What at my end? No, no. Here, I, I mean, basically, all the fan casters have got sent to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and I sh I shall bring it. I'm bringing them all along on on Monday before the Everton game. So you will have a if they sell Connor, we riot T-shirt. I'd love it. I'll wear it. There we go. I'll wear yeah. it and I'll make sure that I stick it on social media with me wearing it. Yeah, you you two can boil some piss. How delightful. Yes, I'd love it. Thank you. Right. Um. Now, this is one of those rare occasions on the show where JK and I will not be boiling the piss. It, we leave that to our listeners who have written in some fantastic emails and we will be reading them out right after this. <laughs>
Chelsea, 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 indeed. Uh, right. Uh, OK, the first email, Jonathan, is from a young man. I don't know if he's a young man, but it's a man, definitely a man. And he's called Damien Bush. Dear Chidge and JK. He's got that bit right. I like that. It's always yeah, a good start. Good start. Good start. good start. I wanted to thank you for the podcast. Oh, Damien really gives great insight to expat fans. <laughs> well, I don't know from whom because I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, we probably. know nothing. No, nothing, mate. We know I nothing. In, I lived in Singapore for 10 years, used to regularly tune in whilst, I like the use of that, whilst, not whilst, whilst, whilst returning from a forage. No, whilst returning for a few games from a stag hunt. No, sorry, what's the matter with me? Whilst returning for a few games a season. However, realised that when living back in London for all of 2023 and attending most home games, I stopped listening. Oh. <gasps> Mm, mm. This is because the lads in the King's Head and Blackbird Earl's Court filled in for all the drivel and pointless in that <laughs> before and after each game. <laughs> this is what we want. Love it. Oh, uh, yeah. Drivel and pointless analysis. I think that's, that is, that's, that's got to be a strap that. line. It must Chelsea, be. Yeah. The yeah. Chelsea fan cast, drivel and pointless analysis. I love before it. Before and after each game. I'm going to change our header on X. To yeah. That. And I'm writing it down now, actually. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Drivel I love it. Yeah. Damien, I mean, you may have the copyright on that, but thanks anyway. We're going to nick it, definitely. Drivel, drivel and pointless analysis. Good stuff, yeah. Um, uh, a before, and you have to get that before and after each game, because that is exactly what we uh, what we do. Um, uh, anyway, I've now lived, moved to Bahrain, and once again, an avid listener. Because mm. he, he doesn't need doesn't get it from the King's Head and no. Blackwood. No, but you yeah, can't okay. get enough of drivel and pointless analysis yeah. before and yeah. after each game. No, no, absolutely. Uh, I'll be back for the Burnley home game. Won't be tuning in that week. Oh, okay, because you'll be back for the drivel and pointless analysis of the King's Head and Blackbird. I get well, it. Mate, you know, Damien, Damien, yeah. you could have come to the cock. Yeah. And you could have got some first-hand drivel and pointless analysis before the game and yeah, after it, the game. It, it could, that would be uh, killing two uh, yeah. two blackbirds with one stone, wouldn't it? Because it would be it, it would be the program itself plus, but not the program, but the same drivel and pointless analysis from the yeah. very people who do the show. Yeah, um, but I love this. Keep up the great work, up the Chelsea, Damien Bush. Well done, Damien. Well done. Marvelous. Marvelous. Great, great, great start to the show. Great but start a, to the show. Yeah. Drivel pointless. and Pointless analysis. Perfect. Exactly that. Exactly yeah, that. Yeah. So here we go. Number two, Josh Ames, dear Chidge and JK. Another good start. Solid, solid Very start good. so far. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been a while since I've written in, uh, as I've been at a complete loss as to how to put this season into words so far. Well, indeed, Josh. Uh, but this week has really riled me. Oh, okay, right. We're, 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 here's the disclaimer, JK. Uh, this is the first in off the post show we've done for a month. So we're going to have to trawl chronologically through a whole month's worth of games. So just bear with us. Uh, yeah, I write this email the Friday before the Newcastle game. I can't even remember the Newcastle game. Uh, and after seeing Poch out all over social media this week. Now, don't get me wrong. Poch's management has not exactly set the world alight. Poch is not the man to set the ball all alight. Chelsea, that one. No, maybe a different version. JK's Im Im immovable at my attempt at humour. I'm oh, oh, give us a joke. Yeah, sorry, uh, yeah, I would sorry. be the first to agree with that. Yeah. But changing managers right now will do more. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need a tumbleweed effect, don't we? Uh, <laughs> anyway, changing managers right now will do uh, more harm than good. All we do is kick the can down the road. It's not like these players are not playing for him. I honestly believe they are. I agree. They're just not a very good team. I agree. Uh, what happens if we bring someone else in? We set ourselves back at least another year. I agree. The new manager has a complete mishmash of players and has to assess who he does or doesn't want while, all the while trying to mould them into his team exactly where we were last summer. Poch has, had, uh, has almost had that year now and should be in place this summer to definitively say, get rid of A, B and C player and we need to bring in X, Y and Z so I can make this team my own. I agree. Uh, we have to remember that this isn't the Chelsea team of the Roman era. An elite club may be, but the team is mid-table. We've seen two seasons that proves that. 12th place last year and currently sitting 11th. As much as we may yearn for the Roman days, we have to face the facts. This is where we are. The chopping and changing of managers that were so successful under Roman had a constant about every one. Czech, Ashley Cole, JT, Ivanovic, Mikel, Essien, Frank, Didier. The core of the team stayed more or less the same throughout. That's why it was so successful. Absolutely bang on. It wasn't the higher than fire them philosophy necessarily. It was the squad we had. 
We don't have that luxury anymore, so that just will not work. If it was down to me, Poch gets this summer to really make this squad his own, and then at least until Christmas. If we're still mid-table come Christmas, then clearly it hasn't worked and a change can be talked about. That's my opinion anyway. Guys, I have to add, you really are like Chelsea therapy. Knowing in particular after a bad result, there are other Chelsea fans who <laughs> the exact same way as me really does comfort. Uh, I'm sure that is the same for everyone else that listens to the fan cast. Keep up the good work. It's class. Win, lose or draw, we're forever Chelsea. Keep the blue flag flying high, Josh Ames. Well, I, I, I there's very, there's nothing I, I disagree with in that email. I think Josh has got it absolutely bang on. But um, no, if it's probably with this club that they'll wait till he buys all his players and then sack him before the season starts. Of course, yeah, because that would be uh, typical, wouldn't it? Um, uh, there is a theory, of course, that um, uh, because he's now said that he wants to get rid of some of the players. Uh, that may be him slightly not doing what the club wants, and he may therefore create some friction with the board. So uh, unless they, they've agreed to that, yeah, because yeah. He, he can't be a yes man. Otherwise, he, what's the he, fucking point? He has been a yes man up until very recently. He squeaked earlier on that he wanted some new players, but then I think backtracked whether somebody had a word with him about that. But uh, at the weekend, because uh, we're speaking after the uh, the two two draw against Sheffield United. He uh, he mentioned in the press conference that um, uh, some of them did not fit the right profile for the club, which is an interesting way of expressing that he sort of thought they were shit. But yeah, um, I like that. I'm, right. I'm going to be using that again in the future, actually. About say that again. Say Sorry. again. I'm, I'm going to be using that again yeah, for yeah, myself. What, saying what? Saying what? To, to say, uh, "Sorry, you're not quite fitting the right profile for me." Rather than yeah. saying I don't like you and I think you're a prick, I'm going to say sorry. We're not. You're not fitting. You're not quite the right profile for me. So uh, I, I like that because it's 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 making them sound important whilst telling them that they've got the sack. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I like that. Good. I like that too. I like that too. Josh Joshua Spa, but he spelt S P A H R Spa. I presume it's Spa rather than Spahara. That would be Jonathan Sparra, which would be completely clue, different. Mate. Not a Jonathan clue. Sparrow, Johnny Sparrow, Josh Sparrow, Josh Spar, S P A H R. Warmest welcome to you, Mr. Chidgy. Oi, what about me, Spar? What about me, mate? I just finished reading your FC UK bit. Think local, act global, and bless you and thank you. I absolutely agree and love what you wrote and think. As an American who's only left my country once for a trip to Germany, wow. My absolute respect for match going supporters can't be stated more clearly than thank you all dearly with much love. I acknowledge that paying less than $100 a year to watch Chelsea play on TV while I'm having a coffee in pyjamas in America is a luxury. And the fans that pay $100 plus for a ticket, plus travel time, plus other expenses, they're higher up the ladder. Well, I don't think that's higher up the ladder. I just think it's probably they're a bit closer than you are. So uh, anyway, I nod to them completely. I'm still a fan. I nod to them completely. I've only ever hoped for the same respect of me being a couch watching overseas fan. I love Chelsea and the fans and the club culture. Good. Your article was lovely. Teared me up a bit. Oh, sweet, Joshua. Sweet. Uh, again, thank you immensely for what you wrote. Uh, you should have been reading that one because it was love for you, Chidge. Huge love for you. Joshua Spa, New Haven, Connecticut. 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 I never know how you pronounce Connecticut. Is it is the, the C sort of silent as in as in uh, Wimbledon? Connecticut. 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 Is it? I don't think it, can they, they go Connecticut. They do go. Yeah, but that's like, like they go aluminum. Al al aluminum. Uh, yeah, but that's because it's spelt w without the I. But, uh, are they? They. It's the, anyway, we'll we'll get down the the road. You of, say um, tomato. I say tomato. We'll be going Maryland again, won't we? This is the trouble. Maryland. Maryland. Yeah, Maryland. 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 When I read this, I wasn't sure. I, I I couldn't figure out whether it was genuinely a lovely little note thanking me for my article or was dripping with sarcasm because actually he completely disagrees and thinks I was having a pop at people who sit in their pajamas uh, watching Chelsea play on TV while having a coffee. Um, I mean, oh. I'm not, uh, you know, so I, I, and I'm not sure. I mean, if, if it was, if it is dripping with sarcasm, then I wholeheartedly applaud you, Josh. Uh, may I call you Josh or would you prefer Joshua? Because Americans don't really do sarcasm. So if you've managed that, then I, I think you you are in the genius stakes as a, as an American. I mean, basically, my article was not really having a pop at, at overseas fans. It was merely pointing out that 
whether you like it or not, there is a hierarchy of support. And my my examples, I mean, I did say something like, you know, if you're watching, you know, getting up in the, early in the morning and watching in your pyjamas with a cup of coffee, I'm sorry, it's not quite the same as driving five hours up to Burnley in a winter's night, watching us get beaten and then coming back home. It's a, it, it's a little bit different. But but my main point was that there is a hierarchy of support. And I, in fact, am very comfortable with the fact that compared to most of the friends that I have, I am a shit Chelsea supporter and come way down that hierarchy. But but the thing is, I have no problem with that because I'm not insecure about my support for Chelsea. So my real point was that all these people that whinny about, oh, match going supporters aren't more important than the overseas fans are basically just fucking insecure and suffering from small dick syndrome. Wow. Well, we'd like to know. Can he write in again? Can Joshua tell us which one it was? Or tell me, write to me, and then I'll tell you what it was. I mean, basically, I was saying that I, I am not insecure about the fact that I am a rubbish supporter compared to most of the people I know. So why does everybody else have this problem that everybody has to be equal? Yeah. You know what I mean? But as I, as I say, I, I think anybody who watches the team is a wherever they watch, whatever the well, time they watch, they're a supporter. I don't think it... Well, exactly. You know, I don't have any... Uh, I know I'm pleased that they support Chelsea. I'm pleased for them. Yes. You know, and if they're in America, the chances of them coming over to see the team are are, are titchy. So therefore, be pleased that they're they they should be pleased that they support the team. The more supporters we get, the better. But here's and, the thing, you know, yeah. when I wasn't living in London, it was too damn lazy to come and watch Chelsea. Right? I didn't think, and I watched it on the on the big match or or or, or, or match of the day or whatever. I didn't think I was as good a supporter as people like you who were going every week. I thought you were a much better supporter than me. So so I, this, this is my point. Do you, you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a fucking hierarchy. Deal with it. What's the problem? That's really what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. don't like it. They don't. They get really uppity. It's all about their own fucking insecurity, mate. Tell, and trust me, I'm a psychotherapist. I do, actually, Church. I trust, I, I, I trust your uh, knowledge of, uh, of people's psyches. Yes. Anyway, just just to round that up, Josh, if 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 you ever do get the chance to come over to uh, to London to to watch Chelsea play, uh, and that Jake and I are still alive, um, I would I, there would be nobody more you know ha happier than either Jake and I for you to be here and come and see us, come and have a drink with us in the pub and 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 have a chat. I mean, you know, J.K. will confirm. You know, every weekend or or home weekend, actually, even some of the aways. That's what I do. I, I sit there welcoming and buying pints for people from all over the world who come to say hello and share in the absolute joy and pleasure of watching our team play at, at its home. Right, JK? Yep. Exactly that. Love to you all. Uh, right, Del Hedges. Now, that is a proper name, isn't it? Del Hedges. I like that. Is that short for Derek? I don't know. Del Hedges is a proper name. I love it. Hi, Stanford yeah. Chidge and Jonathan. Oh, this is going to be one of these emails. I'm loving it already. The school bell rings. I'm running full bore around the science block towards my next lesson and crunch, slowly picking myself up the up off the floor with a great lanky streak standing over me, waiting to smack me down again. This was my first week at Deadworth Green Secondary Modern, and that lanky streak was my first encounter with Peter Osgood. Wow. Good grief. Wow. In my haste, I ran into him, flattening him. Could have ruined a great career. And he's shouting, watch where you're effing going. Fist raised, threatening to deck me again. Later, I got to know Peter in more amicable circumstances. So much so, I used to take his mum, Ivy, to Stamford Bridge on match days with a couple of my mates. My first introduction to Chelsea was with my granddad in the 1955-56 season, age six, my two Man United sporting sons call me a glory supporter. Wonder why. I never saw Jonathan's dad at Sa uh, dad Sam at Stamford Bridge, but saw plenty of other celebrities at the time, like singer Vince Hill, Melvin Hayes, Ain't Half Hot Mum, Jane Rossington, Crossroads Motel, Anthony Booth, actor and Tony Blair's father-in-law, and numerous others. The kid family must have been in the posh seat somewhere. My granddad, <laughs> my granddad and me were in the old North Stand. Uh, it really East was and, East and middle East and yeah. middle in the posh seats. Exactly. It really what? was a ground to go celebrity hunting in those days. One week I'd be watching Chelsea, the next Fulham, uh, next Fulham down the road, but it was always going to be Chelsea and always have been. And through some pretty turgid years, I have to say being a Chelsea supporter has rarely ever been easy. 
That's my Chelsea background. But the real reason I'm emailing, I, I mean, Dell, that would have been enough. That was just joyous. I'm emailing is the mystery of so many injured players in the Premier League. My wife is a lot younger than me, and she is a prison officer in a men's prison. And quite often she has to wrap up unruly or violent prisoners. This means getting them on the floor and in restraints. And she made the point that big muscle-bound prisoners are easier to wrap up than the wiry speedy sorts. Two seasons ago, I read that Mason Mount was beefing up his body weight training. It made him slower. And after being injury-free for so long, he's now injured and out of the game for a long period. Reese James' upper body is the result of weight training. And when you consider our best player, Cole Palmer, is stick thin and quite the opposite in body type, he and his body type don't get injured so much. Football is a game of skill and speed, not strength. Going back to Peter Osgood, he was tall, thin and very agile. And I think the pitches, which are harder, uh, which are harder now, affect the over-muscled players more. Their lack of agility because of extra muscle makes them more rigid. Players with longevity in the game, like Ashley Young, Jermaine Defoe, Teddy Sheringham and our own Thiago Silva, all of the less muscled, leaner body type. Best, Pele, Cruyff, Ozzy, Hazard, Messi, none of them very muscled, but all very agile. Chelsea's Palmer, Gusto, Gallagher and Sterling are all reminiscent of the body type that sees less injuries. I liken it to shock absorbers on a car. If they're rigid, you get a harder ride and feel the bumps more. A less rigid shock absorber gives a smoother ride. A player's shock absorbers are his legs. If they're rigid, more than flexible and carrying more upper body weight, they're going to be prone to injury more. Certainly not equating the two, but it lends the idea I'm trying to purvey. When Jonathan mentioned the football boots we used to wear compared to modern boots that have little uh, protection, that bears credence along with much harder pitches. Personally, I think it's time for the FA to give all players a fighting chance by having an intermediate league between the Premiership and the Championship, cutting down the number of teams in each division, play league games fortnightly with cup games ETC played on the opposite weekends instead of midweek. That would give players more recovery time and the midweek games would only be for the few Premier teams playing in Europe and international matches. Something like this has to happen because I can see playing careers getting shorter and clubs holding on to players that hardly see a pitch during the season. And boy, have we got a few of them. Does anyone know why we buy injured players? for Fafana and Lavia, for instance? Sorry, I'll have to stop. I can feel a rant coming on. <laughs> Thank you, Chidge, Jonathan, and your many illustrious guests. For as an old retiree living up north now, I rarely get to see Chelsea other than on the TV. So your fan cast is an absolute tonic for me and my dotage. Thank you all kindly. Best regards, Dell Hedges. Dell, I have to say that's one of the best emails we've had in months. I mean, the Aussie anecdote, unbelievable. And then the sensible stuff he was coming out with about injuries. I, I hadn't thought of that. Interesting, isn't it? Because also Frank Lampard was never injured, was he? He was no, hardly no. very muscular. He was just... Uh... Uh, uh great legs and uh um and and just slim a slim body slim upper body didn't have uh have bulges anywhere and scn got injured after he started bulking up didn't yeah. he if you remember as 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 we've established as uh, as reese james has done so it, it could be something in that i'm surprised that they haven't come come up with that though as a as an answer to the injuries or perhaps Perhaps they're uh, perhaps they don't know. Perhaps they're all a bit thick about that. The who you'd have thought you'd have thought they'd have come up. Who would know though? Who would know? But I, I, I we, we've said we've talked about it, haven't we? About the the thinness of the boots, the yeah. all the injuries of people having their toes stepped on was something that never happened before. The pitches and the pitches as well, not being not number giving. of games. Yeah, and the number of games. Although I think that's a bit of a red herring, unless you take into account the games possibly faster. Yeah, I think the the game is a phenomenal um, strain on the body. Full stop. The mm. speed of it. Uh, but yeah, that's that's interesting. Perhaps one should send that to a uh, a Chelsea trainer. No doubt they'll come back with some science disproving it. Yeah, not enough data, mate. Yeah, yeah. No, not enough data. Data. Yeah. Okay, David Cracknell. Hello, Stanford, Chidge, and JK. Just like to have a little say on the amount of injuries, not just for oh, Chelsea, oh, topical. all of the league. Hey, my background is sports turf, as I'm a groundsman. Very good, David, because this is absolutely perfect. We've been talking about this. All Premier League pictures, pic, pictures, pictures, and training must be pitches and training fields will be what we call sand-based sports pitch, which basically means the grass is grown in straight sand. I never knew this at all. Did you know this, Chidge? Which, nope. is, which is great for drainage. You can handle extreme amounts of rain. 
That's why we don't have any games postponed in the Premier League because of waterlogged pictures, pitches anymore. But they do need strengthening with plastic grass like fibres stitched into these profiles to strengthen the grass and the root system. Yeah, I realised that. The grass coverage is so good, the ball just sits on top of the grass, allowing for great ball roll. Yes, that would make sense. These types of pitches, uh, pitches are great to work on as a groundsman. I'd never played on one until last December when I was playing social five-a-side on Wednesday evenings. Hard to describe the feeling of playing on one of these pitches. It just feels like they're so grippy. They take your studs so well. Your foot feels very well planted. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, I've just read ahead. On week three of playing five-a-side, my Achilles snapped. Oh, my God. <laughs> And was in a plaster cast over Christmas. I'm only laughing because of the horror of it. I'm sorry. Oh my God. Just thinking because you were saying how well the foot planted, and then you forgot. Yeah. It was in a plaster cast uh, over Christmas and New Year. I'm still off work and I'm unable to drive until Easter. Yeah, absolutely right. I've had I've had big Achilles problems myself, David. It's it's not wise to get that injured. In fact, Chidge has got Achilles problems at the moment. I have. You? I have. Um, Tendinopathy. Anyway. Oh, dear. I'd never thought about the links between the pitches and injuries until now. I've always thought these pitches are the best you can get and great for the sport. But playing on one and snapping my Achilles has given me time to think. And I wonder if it's something to do with the amount of grip you get. All that sudden stopping and starting just puts extra strain on your soft tissues. Very well said. Absolutely. Because, yeah, if it's gripping fantastically, then it, the body isn't used to that amount of, of, of grip. Talk. Yeah. Talk, talk. Well said. I am talking, Chid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't feel too sorry for me by my three months off. So I live in New Zealand. Oh, <laughs> I've been able to watch a lot of games, either live, as is the case of the Newcastle game. It'll be at my nine o'clock in the morning. Kids at school, wife at work, house to myself. Has its upsides. Unless we're shit, then I just wasted two hours of kid free time. Yes. <laughs> also, just got a little feeling that David Fafana might work out for us over the next few seasons. Um, he looks a bit of a unit he's just smashed one in against West Ham. Yes, I think they've they've um, he's he's not looked too bad for Burnley actually. Um, no. So uh, let's see what. Although, they're although doing. Adam Adam from No No Nay Never said that he, he 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 scores a great goal and then misses six sitters. Yes, you know? yes, yeah. yes. Anyway, but it's interesting to see somebody performing quite well as a loney. Just want to get this off my chest. Hope it's interesting. Can regards David Cracknell. It's absolutely fantastic, yeah. actually, David, because it's exactly what we were talking about and the yeah. fact that you're a groundsman. And that, that sort of concurs, doesn't it, with the fact that the there is something in the pitch that is probably alien to the way the human body works. You're not it's a it's a construct, isn't it, what you've they've created. It's not real grass in a real a grassy environment you've got the plastic in it and obviously growing grass and sand is fair enough but the fact that you've got the plastic linked into it and it grips well it probably isn't something that the human body's used to doing yeah it's gripping yeah. it so with that so well well listened because we were debating this so yeah fantastic thank you so much brilliant proper knowledge yeah value. yeah yeah if we mention yeah. anything again please don't hesitate to write in again right. Because it's, no. it's fantastic. fantastic. Because basically, we just talk drivel with pointless yeah. analysis from. Yeah, uh, we, we do. We have. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got. Yeah, yeah. Drivel and pointless analysis before and after the game, and at the moment on a podcast as well, don't we? So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there yeah. we go. Good. Yeah. Uh, great stuff. Uh, right, Daniel, old mate of ours, Daniel Cabral. Hello, Chidge and JK. It's been a while. How many depressing emails could I send you each week? JK, each week speaks my internal monologue when I can't put words to our performance. I turned to JK for guidance. After <laughs> listening to his rant, I put my phone down and hugged the air, imagining JK in my arm <laughs> with a tear down his eye. As I say to him, I understand. Our struggle has felt like 10 years, when in reality it's just under two years. Keep it up, lads. I know you're just as tired as us all. We love you. Daniel. Daniel, oh, we love you too. Sweet, sweet male. Lovely. Lovely bloke, Daniel. By the way, really lovely. Uh, how's your How's your young young boy? I think it's a boy. You had a baby boy not that long. I say not that long ago. He's probably about seven now or something. But do send uh, him and your family our best, Daniel. J.K. Uh, Justin Dixon, Chidge and J.K. I'm turning forty on March the twenty fourth, so you're already forty. Happy now. birthday for last month. Yeah, for last month. My wife suggested we travel across the pond from Austin, Texas, for a Chelsea match as my birthday present. Wow. Wow, what a fantastic birthday present. What a great wife. Yeah, blimey. Oof, superb. Can I can I butt in quickly? Yeah. Uh, for my 50th birthday, 
uh, well, my wife took me to New York, actually, which is quite wonderful. But she also offered to take me or at least pay for me to go and see Rush's last ever performance in the L.A. Forum because uh, it was around my birthday. It was literally like my birthday, I think. It was, it was the, almost the same day. And I, and I found out I could get a ticket for about $1,000. And, you know, it'd have been a, at least that to fly out there. I could have stayed with Roban. Uh, she was up for that. She's, she was she was saying, do it, do it, do it. And, and I, I something about, I just, I said, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Didn't do it. But I really fucking wish I had now. That, that, what a love. Wives are wonderful when they do things like that. Yes, yes. Just all the other stuff you have to put up with. Yes, yes. You know, no, I'm only joking. I'm very lucky and privileged and probably, uh, you know, Permanently in the doghouse, quite rightly. Anyway, my my butting in is over now. Good butt in, though. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Very Thank good. you. Very good. Um, uh, we're coming over for the home match against Everton on April the fifteenth, which is next Monday. It is Ooh. next Monday. Oh, I have a friend, oh, friend in London who's a Chelsea fan was able to get us tickets. Since it'll be our first time to a match, I want to get the full experience. So we booked a hotel close to the stadium. Booked a stadium tour. We plan on going to the Cock Tavern before yeah. the match. Yeah. 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 I know it's a Monday night match, but I was hoping I could buy you and as many of the fancast family as possible a pint, since you all have provided so much to me as an avid listener. Greatly appreciate all the effort you put into the podcast. Really enjoy the move to StreamYard so I can put faces to the voices. Yeah! Uh, for Beautiful information, faces, uh, lovely faces, lovely faces. This face here, um, I saw my theatrical agent. The Broken other day. a thousand hearts, that but, face. Yeah, well, a couple. Um, a bit more <laughs> couple a bit of thousand, more. you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a couple of, yeah, yeah, a couple of million. Oh, yeah. Hey. Um, hey. Um, I went to uh, a friend of mine. The actress has had cancer, so she's just been um, recovering, and and happily, she's she's recovering well um, in remission. And she's been doing some paintings. She's a really good painter. She had a. I went to a gallery, had displayed a lot, and tried to to sell them. And. Uh, she had a couple of private viewings and I went along and my agent was there and he said, my darling, he said, I haven't recognized you. He said, look at you. He said, look at you with your beard and your long hair. Look at you. He said, you've got to get some pictures of it. He said, because you, he said, I could get you work all the time now looking like that. Tramp is in, he said. <laughs> <laughs> Who said this? My theatrical agent. Oh, right, right, right. I can get you work whenever now. Three I had three three calls last week for people looking like you. Tramp. Tramp is in. Is in. So every show from now on, Tramp is in. Tramp is in. <laughs> like it, like it. So I think the, but the girlfriend is also saying, do you think you could trim your beard a little bit, darling? She said to me. And the daughter said, Daddy, Daddy, when you kiss me, all I get is moustache. She said, I went, yeah, okay, fair enough. So Some, think... some, women, some women like that. They like they like they like having their fancy tickled by a bit of a moustache or a beard. Uh, I mean, I remember my my lovely niece, who not often talked about, but Sasha's sister. She was so pissed off when I got a beard. She wouldn't kiss me anymore. No, it's horrible, horrible. I all that hair. Ugh, go away. Leave me alone. How, how old was she at the time? Twenty five. Uh, about 40, 40. No, no, she, she's, she was about 12, 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ah, I don't like it. Shave it off. It's horrible. My 15-year-old says, oh, this is quite cool, actually, Daddy. She doesn't quite like it. Hey, hey Daddy, Daddy, Trump yeah. is in. Trump is in. You know, I told her that story, and she said, oh, it's very funny. I told her mother that story, and her mother didn't listen. And uh, <laughs> uh, she was absolutely... Story of your life, mate. Yeah, hey, hey, absolutely. <laughs> Far for the course. And in fact, in fact, Georgia said, why don't you listen to that story, mummy? It's really, daddy's been really funny. For a and change. She, and she said, what? I said, oh, God, okay. Anyway, um, sorry. FYI. FYI, Justin, we're in the middle, sorry. FYI, for your information, I think I've sussed that's for your information. Hey, I'm, I'm on fire. I started writing this email just after the Carabao Cup final. Now to rant about the shit for, for performance of the Carabao Cup final. What the fuck? We have plenty of chances to win in normal time. We should have should have and should have kept the pressure on right from the start of extra time. Indeed, because we had them on the ropes. We did. In my opinion, a winning coach would have given his players a pep talk to keep going. I agree. If he told the players to play for penalties against Klopp's kids, that tells me he might not be the right manager for Chelsea. Update. Just got done watching the Newcastle match going into halftime at 1-1. I was really nervous the lads would have their normal cup of sleepy time tea come out flat after the break and we'd end up losing 3-1. But to much excitement, we came out and played with some energy. We're able to secure the three points, albeit not without some late butt pucker time. I like that. 
butt pucker time. Do you want to write that one down as well? Yeah, no, we like that. Butt pucker. butt pucker. That'll be in a fan bike close yeah. to you at some Very, time. Yeah, too. absolutely. It will. Butt pucker time. I like the sleepy time tea as well, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, very good. Yeah. Um, uh, butt pucker time. Uh, albeit not without. So, albeit. Fancy. I love it, that phrase. Yeah, lovely, Justin. Yeah. Albeit. You know. I'm sure, it's not all bite. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that would be A L B I T E. Uh, A L B Y T E to be trendy. I went a bit Christopher Walken. Did it? Wow. Oh. Yeah. He said A L B Y I T. It'd be Y I T. Albeit not without some late bug pucker time after their goal in the 90s. That's not minute. Christopher Walken. That's uh, no, it's not. That's smashy and nicey. That's, yeah, that's right. Smashy and nicey. Yeah, not that's off. Rock. Not off. Last rant bench Sterling, give Mudrick a go for a few games. Well, I think that's what he's been attempting to do. Sterling is the highest played. Paid play to play, highest plaid. Play, no, Sterling is the He's highest. Definitely paid very player. played, and he and he walks around, doesn't track back. Seems to have lost his ability to score goals. Yeah, we've been, we've been uh, tearing him one, haven't we? Mudrick is raw, but fuck, he's fast. Yes, he is Billy Wiz, and that goal he scored shows me he seems to be gaining some confidence. Yeah, he's sort of in and out with him at the moment, but who knows? Mm. Now for a random thought, I don't think Moises, Moises, and Moises, 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 there he is. Get out of here. Yeah, and Enzo are close to the standard. We need to challenge for trophies in the Premier League. And I think are absolutely right. This appears to be the way the argument is going at the moment, that neither of them is quick enough or neither of them is good, is enough. good, is good enough, which is appalling, considered they're the most expensive players in the world. Uh, so what if we move James? If ever, oh, yeah, I don't foresee. Well, let's see what happens next season. There are so many. Yeah, well, I, I agree with that, and I said that before. I, I'm in, I'm in concurrence with JD about that. Yeah, if we move James to a defensive midfield role where he can play in front of the defence where he played at Wigan, he has the passing ability needed. He can hold the ball under pressure. This would limit all the running required as a right. And he's back. a unit. Yeah, obviously we would lose his fantastic crossing ability. And I'm we've seeing, got Gusto. yeah, seeing some interesting things with Gusto. Yeah, Gusto's re played really well. Well, not the same level as James. Only twenty has been a bright spot. Not sure what you guys think about this. Well, we've been talking about it. We think he's um, Gusto's excellent, and in fact, I suggested that James should play at, at, at midfield. Yeah, we we, we both have point. over the. We both have not um, too deep, distant past. But, but once again, where he, he's such a um, uh, a conundrum, and I, there is the possibility they'll sell him because they may have worked out that who knows. Um, but uh, we only have to remember that the terrible mistake they made with Robin when they sold him because they thought that he was permanently injured. And he went and retired at 73. Strengthened up. Yeah, and only just retired and was possibly one of the best players in the world. So we've done that a few times recently, haven't we? Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, hopefully see you all in a few weeks. Thanks for all that you do. And up the fucking shells. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah. Um, I must try and come along to the cock. On well, you, if you come along to the cock for a bit of cock, oh, then I'll, yeah. I'll give you the give you your T-shirt. That would be perfect. I'll try and do it. Let's just try and get that. I'll try and get there a bit earlier. I'm going to, I mean, it's my day off. So I, yeah, I, I yeah. have a swim. Then I've got to uh, uh, do the weekly shop because I do that on a Monday. The weekly shop. The right. weekly shop. Yes, right. Uh, and then I'm going to hoof it up to London. So I, I shall be there good and early. Good and oily. Oily or early? Yes, oily. Oily. What time's kickoff? I don't know. Is it eight o'clock? I don't know. On a Monday. They seem to change it. I'll look it up while you're reading the next one. No, I can do it. I've got I've got flash score open because I'm laughing. Yeah. At Liverpool, I'm laughing at Liverpool being one nil yeah. down. Eight o'clock kickoff. So, I mean, I'll probably be in the uh, in the public house, as in the cock, for about five. But I can get there earlier. What time do you have to go and eat? Um, about an hour beforehand. Right. So there you go. So if I was in the cock about five, that'd be early enough, wouldn't it? Yeah, I won't be there for five. I'll be there for six. Um, no, well, I'll, I'll still be there at six. I'll be there, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, yeah. sorted. See you Monday, JD. Looking forward to it, me old mucker. Right, uh, Kevin Wright. Hi, gents. Uh, just listening to the excellent, as always, podcast after the Newcastle game and your praise of Jackson, who does seem to be getting better, which I think is because he is playing in a position he prefers. Uh, i.e. not in the middle. With regards to the discussion about yellow cards, Jackson, who got his ninth card against Palace on the 12th of February, and I hope I'm not tempting fate, but has so far managed to be controlled enough not to get his 10th. You would be correct. And considering you wrote this email a few weeks ago, he still hasn't got that all-important all extra a yellow card, which would see him banned. 
Let's hope he can stay card free until the yellow cards get reset, which which I believe is after the 32nd game, which is another five games. Not sure if the FA Cup comes into that. Please correct me if I'm wrong about this. I don't know, JK. I think I, it's, I, about, it's about to happen, isn't it? I think. So if he gets a yellow card against Everton on Monday, he's screwed. And so is Caicedo. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Guarantee them right, money on it, money on it. Jackson and Moises, yellow we, card. We Monday thought night. he'd get a yellow card when he went, one of the penalties, didn't he? He went up to the post and started cleaning his boots on the post. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, and I do. The, ref, the referee peculiarly didn't do anything about it, just told him to go get back again. When any any referee worth his salt would have said, uh, I think that's gamesmanship, could you? Well, uh, yeah, but any, any referee card? worth their salt would have given a uh, Bayern Munich a penalty for that handball. Did you see that? And I didn't see it. No, no, no. no. The he had blown the whistle. The defender clearly didn't realise. The the keeper keeper picked it up, and passed it to the uh, the the defender. The defender then picked it up and then passed it back to the goalkeeper. So the defender hadn't realised the ref had blown the whistle. Already blown for it, yeah. And but Tuchel that, went absolutely mental about it, saying, right, "But he should have been sent off because it's right, clear. Right, it's, it's a clear right, infraction right. of the rules." Bayern were quite good, you know. Bayern, yeah. you know, you you just look on and think up their game, didn't they? Oh, uh, but you look on and I just despair. They're good you players, know? mate. They're good players, basically. No, but also he's such a good manager. Yeah, oh, he is. God. I miss him. I oh, miss him. God, I miss him so much. Oh, uh, anyway, uh, right. Also, I would uh, like to say the criticism about Poch changing the defence too much is a bit harsh, as the injuries are the root cause of this. If we said that, then uh, I would agree with you, Kevin. We were being a bit harsh. Uh, you discussed the fact that we're scoring goals but conceding as well is, in my opinion, both down to silver. It's a good point. He slows down the game too much, giving the opposition time to reset, and which we all know a low block is our Achilles heel, but his defensive now also shores up the defence. I think, I think the point about silver, which kind of should have been proven the other day but sadly wasn't was that you know it's pretty simple i mean tuchel tuchel and i think lampard possibly spent a lot of time figuring out that you cannot play tiago silva in a back four because his lack of pace uh, and mobility uh, his age gets exposed but if you play him in a back three he has enough protection and he can play as that kind of middle center back with a plom and in the old days, uh, had a great passing range and would distribute for for ease. But I I I I I I wonder if he doesn't look that good anymore in the back three, because he's surrounded by players who can't actually keep hold of the ball. So that's possibly why he dithers a lot. So he thinks, fuck, if I pass it, him, we'll just lose it, and then I'm going to be on my ass trying to da 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 da. I mean, you look how bad Moises is at, at uh, receiving the ball under pressure. You know, this is what Silver's up against. So maybe that's what's happened. Because, I mean, normally you put Silver in a back three and, and he looks still wonderful. But put him in a back four has always been the case whilst he's been at Chelsea that he doesn't look too clever. But anyway, I, I digress. As I can't get to the games, I have to endure the red biased bollocks Carragher and Neville come out with or don't come out when praise should be given to something Chelsea have done. Jackson's flick off Palmer's shot, which was certainly going wide, was class. If that had been scored by Salah, Odegaard, Nunes or someone else playing in red, Neville would be gushing about how good it was. The most he got animated during the first half was when Isaac scored. How much Chelsea paid for a player is always all, is also always brought up in commentary, but I don't, didn't hear how little we paid for, for Palmer mentioned once. Sorry for the rant, but it really pisses me off. Look ah. forward, Yeah, look forward to hearing your comments about the points I've raised. Keep up the good work. Keep the blue flag flying high. Kev, anything to add, Jake? I made a, I replied to them as we were going along, didn't I? Really? Um, I think they've become begrudgingly. They they Palmer's turned the corner with all the commentators. They they say how fantastic he is. Yeah, they now say, why is he playing for Chelsea? He should be playing yeah. for a decent team. That's what they do. In fact, that's what Sherwood attempted to get him to say it. Um, bastard. When he, when he interviewed him. Bastard. The bastard. The bastard. Um, I wish there was a. Uh, the graph just went up from not being good to getting better. But unfortunately, the graph goes up and Jackson plays competently. I mean, I, as I said in my fan by the other day, he, he started off a move at the weekend against Sheffield United where he um, uh, he did a wonderful flip turn, flip round, got the ball. And I thought, blimey, that's good, isn't it? He then laid it off, ran into the penalty area, received the ball uh, on the six-yard box. All he needed to do was tap it in. And missed it completely. So you got 
everything there was in of, about Jackson in 30 seconds, which is yeah. sudden moment of excellence with a complete moment of absolute shit. Absolute shit. Time. So um I think Silver is um it's a conundrum as so many things are at the moment. He got really upset at the weekend. Did you see he was yeah, on his at the very end? I because did. I think he's he sort of realizes that he's surrounded by people who are, as you said earlier, Chid, you just aren't anywhere near good enough. And uh, it doesn't matter how much he, he G's them up. He does, just can't get them to perform at yeah. the same defensive level as him, but he's not the same speed anymore. But um, I reckon if he had a couple of better players around him, he'd be playing all season, actually. Yeah. Fools to the left of me, jokers to the right, stuck mm. in the middle with you. Yeah. Very good, kids. Steelers wheel, everybody. Yeah. Steelers wheel. Yeah. 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 Jerry, Jerry, Jerry uh, Rafferty. Jerry, Jerry Rafferty. Rafferty. Yeah. Yeah. Dear Chidge and Duke of Kid. It is me. This is you. Why am I reading your email? I don't know, Chidge. Perhaps you just wanted to. No, no. Is this, should, this should be you. I've ruined it already. No, you haven't. Uh, dear Chidge and Duke of Kid. Duke, 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 Duke of Kid. Uh, so we're off back to Wembley. We are. My ticket arrived today. I'm going to try and keep this email a bit more upbeat as I realise I've just ranted on all of my recent emails. Having said that Sterling and Sanchez, dear God, ship off to Saudi now. We agree. Please, I'll even pay the postage. Yeah, I'm wondering if you wrapped both of them up together. I wonder how much and put them in brown paper. If you if you told them that they were mummies, you'd probably get it for yeah. free. Yeah. We're returning <laughs> we're returning something to uh to uh the the desert uh, the pyramids for you. Yes, you'd have to put them in a sarcophagus. We stole them about 200 years ago and we feel it's time that you had them back. So here they here they are. But it, as I say it would have to be in a sarcophagus. You'd have to find an appropriate one. So yeah. it'd be a little one and a big one. A matchbox, um, a matchbox for Sterling. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, breaking um, news: Atlanta two, Liverpool nil, or Liverpool nil, Atlanta two. Blimey. At Atlanta two. Blimey. Yeah. Oh, how we laughed. <laughs> uh, Sanchez looked wonkier than the newest of newborn giraffes. Yes, he's not. He's not good enough. Um, and Sterling just lurches from bad to fucking terrible. I think you'll find that we've agreed with you, John. Mm. However, Jackson, in my opinion, really starting to improve. But yes, as we've been establishing, we see improvement and then we see idiocy all in the same movement, in the same, not bowel movement, but movement on the pitch. Since he came back from AFCON, there's been real noticeable improvement. He's chipping in with goals, assists, he's even ever willing runner. He tries and works hard. I'm still not convinced, John, that he's good enough. Moises, 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 get out of here. Yeah, there he is. Get out of here. I think he's really starting to settle. I say it quietly, even Mudrick has had a better spell. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I, yes, yes and no, yes and no, John. Certainly playing in the centre seems to suit him. Yeah, it, 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 it contributed there, despite one comical oggy. Uh, dis, dis, or despite what a comical Oggy decides he's looking more accomplished, although what was he thinking? Obviously, thinking about the own goal, but um, I think you're you're highlighting people who unfortunately have not played well recently. Um, Desazi is not performing at the level required, neither is Moises. Anyway, Moises, Moises yeah. get out of here, Moises, there he is. Uh, then, <laughs> then you just have Gusto and Gallica being their usual industrious selves. And then the icing on our cake, the super silky palmer, that flick to set up Carney was sumptuous. Yeah, he is. But we, we've established now, and I think everybody appreciates that Palmer is a class apart from everybody else. Uh, there are some positives coming earlier in the season. Once Leicester got back to 2-2, we probably would have lost. But credit where it's due to Pochettino, both Carney and Nonny made the desired impact off the bench. What seemed strange to me in the middle, MH Upper, Matthew Harding Upper, was some people near me almost seemed upset by this, as they were gleefully booing when he subbed Mudrick off instead of Sterling, followed with many expletives. Um, yes, he does give Sterling far too many chances, and against Leicester, he's about as shit as it's possible. I reckon he must, he must, he must sit near either Andy Jacobs uh, or, or 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 Tony Glover. No, that's unfair on Tony or or Tim Rose. He certainly doesn't sit around me because I don't think people were booing where I was. Must have been Andy Jacobs. Um, but he says, but of the subs he made worked, which is rare. But even this didn't please them, and Potch was still a complete Gareth. Unfair on this occasion, in my opinion. Back off to Wembley we go. Still just that small glimmer of hope mm. for our season yet. Up the Chelsea's best, John. And I think what the hope is next week, of course, is that City are playing Real Madrid during the week, aren't they? Right. And, uh, um, but having said that, though, po um, Pochettino has been saying that, you know, we're tired all the time. So who knows what team will turn up again. Too much sleepy time, T. Yeah. It must be that. 
you must be that. Mm. But what do we know, Chidge? Because after all, we um, we just talk about we have drivel and pointless analysis, yep. don't we? That's yep. us. That's dope. We should get more T-shirt ideas. The Chelsea fan cast drivel and pointless analysis before and after games. I'd buy one. I'd buy one. <laughs> I'd wear that. <laughs> right, uh, last email for this part, and r- miraculously, we're actually bang on time at the moment. This is never, never, ever been done before. Uh, Mark Smith, uh, hello, Chidge and Jonathan. Uh, the commentator and pundit's view is: we scraped through again, as we did against Dirty Leeds. Dirty bastards! 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 Hate them! Bastards! Bastards! Go get bastards. thy father's gun and shoot thy yeah. Chelsea school. Yeah, bastards. bastards. Anyway, okay, so we can't help it. It's like it's like football Tourette's for us, Mark. Okay, we now, uh, we now, we know how the second half started to go all Pete Tong, not for the first time this season. But had Jackson not been fouled, we may have been back in the driving seat. We will never know. But he was fouled, and this is all part of football, as was the sending off. We then scored two excellent goals. Had this been Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal, it would have been reported how resilient they were and how they never give up. And I think that that is a positive we should take from this performance, along with the performances of Gusto Moises <laughs> and uh, Mudrick to a lesser degree. I got confused by it being Casado. I, I know, yeah, I know. Yeah. You didn't know who? who, who when yeah, did who? we sign yeah. him? Yeah, when did yeah. we sign him, you said? Uh, with regard to the own goal, I blame the goalkeeper, defender, and manager in equal measure. How did the manager Ch- get involved with the own goal? Though? Well, because the change of goalkeeper meant a change in a good working combination. Ah, good yeah. idea. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm yeah, that's what he's just saying. It. He's saying the exactly. next line. Yeah, 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 yeah. That. yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'm surprised Dizazi didn't notice where the keeper was, but f- but feel he mishit the pass due to the pressure he was under. But why was the keeper so? far out he wasn't even in his area var what is it good for nothing Absolutely what is the good of say it again nothing say it again yeah up the chels yeah. and thanks for your tireless good work good on good the God. podcast been listening since the early noisy pub days mark Ooh. ea smith mark you are a, you're a trooper in the hierarchy of chelsea fan cast listeners you were up the top mate lovely i i, I remember those early noisy pub days they were mental Oh, there we go. Anyway, it's time for me and Jonathan to have a very quick uh, libation and drink and a, and, a, and a rub down and a massage. And we will join you very shortly. A quick cuppa. Yes. Real fans, real opinions. I'm Jason Cundy. And you're listening to the Chelsea Football Fancast. Up the Chelsea Football Fancast.com. Welcome back. I am Stanford Chidge. You are listening to the, or watching even, the Chelsea Fancast in off the post with Ch- Ch- uh, me. I've already said who I am. And uh, Jonathan Kidd. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello. How are you this evening? Very good. Yes. Dear Johnny. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've had great fun. Actually, the first part was a cracker. Uh, <laughs> we had some great emails, and we've got some even more more greater emails to come. Uh, but before we get into that malarkey, it's behoven upon me on this fine Thursday, even tide, to announce the uh, wonderful uh, spiritual experience that is reading CFC UK. That is right. This lovely thing here that you can you can go and you can go and purchase it. There you go. This is uh, April's edition. I don't want your shirt. I want you to fight for our club. Yeah, or fight for ours. In fact, he says. There we go. Some little nipper there. I love it. That's a great picture, isn't it, J.K. On on ye old fans, and you're on mute, old love. I was I was coughing. It's great. It's great sentiment. It is, isn't it? Yes, I don't want your shirt. I want you to. I want you to want to fight for hours up the chels. Yeah, yeah. It, it reminds me of that wonderful shirt. Not shirt. That banner we had in the in the eighties. Fight like your fans, <laughs> which, <I> was, <laughs> <laughs> which I've always loved. Anyway, if you want to, I mean, we're almost at the. There's probably only another issue or two left this season. Um, but uh, I think Dave is saying now, if you want to subs- subscribe, if you can't get to the matches and get your own copy uh you can you can subscribe for a year and 
he will send them in the post to you. Uh, a season subscription will cost you 20 quid in the UK, 45 quid in Europe, 60 quid in the rest of the world. Uh, alternatively, if you don't want a hard copy, you just want it emailed to you as a PDF, that will cost you six quid for a season or a pound each. And you can pay via PayPal and you send the email to subscribe and pay pa via, uh, via PayPal to fanzine at CFC UK. And of course, the next thing that we like to plug is this little beauty. Yes, that is a proper Chelsea pitch owner's share. That one, in fact, is signed by Sir Frank of Lampard because you can actually get uh, Chelsea pitch owner shares signed by players. And there's a whole list of uh, players that I read out a few weeks ago, if you remember. But anyway, if you do buy a share, and I strongly urge you to do so, uh, it means that you will have a share of the freehold of the stadium. Uh, essentially, well, you know, this was set up by Ken Bates in the early 90s to, for, you know, to basically take the or, or, or ring fence the ground away from any rapacious property developers who were circling around the club at the time until he sorted that out. Um, I mean, you could argue that that's not necessary anymore, but you never know. The bottom line is, is that there is a lot of rumbling at the moment about, you know, either redeveloping the stadium or relocating it or whatever. But the thing is, if you're a Chelsea pitch owner's uh, shareholder, then you will get a say in that because you get to vote because, uh, for uh, for it to be moved or changed or whatever, they need a majority of over 75% of the shareholders. So you have a voice. You have a little bit of power. You get some say. You have a voice. And that's all you can really ask for these days. Uh, 110 quid for an electronic share and uh, 173, or I think there are thereabouts for a frame share, signed by a Chelsea player. Just go to the Chelsea website, which is CFC. Uh, it's not, no, it's not. That's the fanzine. Uh, the ChelseaFC.com. Search for Chelsea Pitch Owners. You will find out what to do. And you can follow them on, on X at Pitch Owners. So there you go. Uh, I recommend you so to do. Right. It is now going to be time for more emails. Whoop, 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 whoop. whoop. Email warning, email warning. Uh, right. Mar Marco Delavelle. Uh, good evening to all the members of the Chelsea fan cast. I'm a bit worried, Marco. That's a bit of a formal start, isn't it? Good evening. <laughs> to all the members of the Chelsea fan cast. Yes. Here is the news. Um, does Pochettino actually know what he's doing? Mm. Raheem said this is after the uh, the pens, wasn't it? The missed oh. pen and the dreadful uh, shot uh, from the free kick. I like and, this. Though. Uh, um Raheem Sterling had an absolute stinker on Sunday. Absolute but Sunday, stinker. Absolute stinker. Absolute shah. All of you. Shah. Stinker. Stinker. Oh. Um, on Sunday. <laughs> but for some reason, Pochettino took off Mudrick first. It it was something that confused us all, Marco. Yeah. All of us were in the same, um, to use a terrible American expression, ballpark, weren't we? We were all we thinking, were. bloody hell, what is going on in this man's head? Uh, I thought Mudrick played very well. In fact, I feel that our front line played okay, apart from Raheem. Yes, I think everybody is worried about Raheem's contribution. But apparently, according to everybody, he's a very nice guy. He's a very, very nice guy. Yeah, uh, very, very, very nice guy. Very, 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 very nice guy. Uh, yeah, and that. Everything he touched on Sunday went wrong, and yet he has the arrogance to feel aggrieved at not being called up for England. Seriously, I don't think that ever's the case. I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that he's aggrieved for not being called up because he just hasn't been. He would surely be aware that he's not been good enough, that there's something missing. Do you, have you heard that, Chidge? Was he aggrieved? Nah. I didn't hear nah. that. No, no. He was just awful. Yet when Kearney came on, number 10 came up on the board. What the hell, Potch? Yes. The frustration I felt was unreal, as it was for all of us. All mm -hmm. of us, Marco. And luckily, Potch did eventually get Sterling off. When Dweke came on, scored a blinding goal. Now, surely Sterling has to be out the team for a while. Well, that's exactly what's happened, actually, Marco. Also, please never play Sanchez again. Yep, we agree. He just makes me feel so nervous. Plus, both him and Desazi fucked up for Leicester's gift back in the match. But he's just a load of crap. And <laughs> well, we, you know, yes, we agree. He's just a load of crap. Um, I think the problem is, is he can't, um, he can't play the ball out in the same way that Petr well, Petrovic takes less chances, boots the ball up the pitch more, more than uh, Sanchez, who just thinks somehow he's a he's a centre-half. Um, what's the word? Uh, uh, um, a centre-half monkey. Monkey. Uh, monkey. Yeah. Yes, monkey. monkey. Yeah. Um, but he's, uh, he's a load of crap. Petrovic, <laughs> yes, Stata, he's just a load of crap. I agree. Petrovic is by far, uh, by far keeper. It says by far keeper. By far a keeper, by far a better keeper, it must be, and is worthy of the number one jersey, whereas Sanchez doesn't even deserve to be number three, let alone number two. 
And I think Bettinelli gets in there somewhere, doesn't he? But Bettinelli's mm. never, never made an appearance, has he? Has he played once for us in a nah, League Cup know. game or something? Nah, nah. Uh, we got the victory. That's all that matters. We made such hard work of it in the second half. In the end, it was a feeling of relief. Really, I think relief. Relief when Nonny scored the fourth. Nonny's been interesting because he's come on and scored some decent goals when coming on as a kind of um, impact sub. Uh, which seems to suit him at the moment. I think Nonny, of all people, he's becoming one of my, um, uh, one of the players you think actually won't do, I think could do better as if we hang on to him as the seasons go on. Because he does very well for the under-21s. He keeps scoring for them, the England under-21s, I mean. And uh, um, that's that's no mean feat. It's good to be able to do that. And he scored another goal the other day, which was um, excellent. But then we didn't capitalise on it against... Uh, Sheffield United. Anyway, now we hope the boys can get past Man City, get to another cup final. Yep, it's going to be a stern test. Keep the blue flag flying, I Marco Delaval. Well done, mate. Absolutely. Good stuff, Marco. Nice to hear from you. Uh, right. Michael LeBeuf Murray, dearest Stamford Chidge and Duke of Kid. Duke, 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 Duke of Kid. Thank you. Hope you are both well. Uh, we are. Uh, I've started copying Chidge and making notes of the games. Here are some of my notes and thoughts of the game and Chelsea going forward. Well, Jackson, watching videos of Drogba and Costa and other Chelsea ex-strikers with Poch seems to be working. He's been really good since coming back from the AFCON. If he keeps playing like this, and when Nkunku is fit, hopefully we can see them to link up like in pre-season. Sterling, it's the Garrett. Like, isn't it going to be more like to link up in the next pre-season? Yeah, yeah, season. exactly. Yeah, sorry, yeah. It's all right. Sterling, the Gareth, is really poor, needs to be sold. Fuck off, then fuck off some more ASAP. He is living off his Man City days. Once he and his 350 uh, grand a week wage is gone, then maybe we can start rewarding players like Gallagher with bigger wages. Palmer is world class and reminds me of, of a Zola with a mix of, of Hazard and Robin. If he keeps playing like this and we don't pick up our form, he could leave for a big price in a couple of years. But hopefully the team starts to gel and we start winning more games, get back in Europe and start winning some trophies. Gallagher is forever proving that he is worth more money than they are giving him, even when he is ill. He is pressing more than any other Chelsea players close. Oh, yeah, does. I think does. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we really are a different team without him. Cucurella fitted in the side well and didn't really look rusty or out of place, apart from the two goals that we conceded. He looked really good, and he was celebrating challenges and blocks, which to me is showing passion and he wants to play for the club. Trevor Chaloba has played well since coming back in the team, but when all defenders are fit, will he get in the team? or will he? I mean, actually, Michael, I think he's the best defender we've got at the moment. He, he looks the most accomplished. He doesn't look panicked or rushed. He looks comfortable on the ball and and his maturity is there for all to see. But anyway, will he get in the team or will he be sold as pure profit with FFP? I'm assuming Silver will leave at the end of the season. So we will need a backup centre back as Fafana is a bit of a sick note and hasn't really played much since joining. Mudrick looks like he's going to be some player. I said in a previous email how he needs to go on a loan along with Nonny. But if he gets some starts and keeps playing like he did against Newcastle, then he should stay and fight for his place as he looks quite good in the number 10 role. I have to admit, I cheered when Newcastle scored their second, as I predicted 3-2 on my Prem predictions, so I was happy with the result. Oh, naughty, but I know what you mean, Michael. Before the dirty leads, bastards. Dirty, bastards, 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 dirty dirty leads, bastards, bastards, bastards. I my, bastards. I took my kids to school and a Leeds fan drove past. I, show, I shouted, dirty leads, bastard. Bastard, bastard. Bastard in my car. Now my five-year-old son, every time someone says dirty, he says, Leeds, bastards. bastards. Every time. Every time. <laughs> Hopefully he forgets it soon as I don't want him doing a spelling test and they and they say spell dirty and he says dirty Leeds, bastards. 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 Dirty Leeds, bastards. All this bollocks on social media about Poch out and Jose and fucks me right off. It's not like last season when we downed tools and didn't want to play. You can tell this team is playing for Poch and want to do well. Like Clayton said on the pod on Tuesday, if he does stay and doesn't leave in the summer, give him till Christmas and then see how it goes from there. I would keep him because who else could really come in and work uh, how the owners want to run the club? And to be fair on Poch, he hasn't had all of our best players fit and running in one game since he's been in charge. I think when Reese comes back and keeps fit, then Gusto has to go left back because Chilwell, as much as we love him, can't stay fit either. But you could say the same with Reese also. Few things on the Leicester game. We should have been home and hosed if Sterling didn't fuck up two golden chances. He shouldn't have been taking the penalty to start with. The spoilt worst a man can get Sterling. 
if he didn't fuck up and make made it 4-0, then maybe the Dezazi fuck up wouldn't have happened. Or even still, it would have been 4-1 and not 2-1 when Dezazi paid homage to Frank Sinclair. I yeah. like that. Sanchez needs to be sold, sacked, shot, or sent on a one-way trip to space. Just get him out of the team. We look better with Petrovic in goal. End of. Poch did make two good subs, but I think it should have been Sterling going off for Chuck, not Mudrick. He has really started playing well in the last few games and also Nonny for that fact. So maybe they should both stay and not go on loan next season, like I've said previously. I'm really warming to them both. And also, I started warming to Jackson as well. He played the best game I think I've seen him play all season for us. Oh, and JK, was Nonny's goal a whap or a bap? I think it was a bap. A bap. Yeah. Mm, okay. Not heard that much this season on the fan bites, haha. But to be fair, there's not been many whaps. Or BAPs. I think I mentioned a BAP at the weekend, actually. But I think I may have mentioned that um, uh, it was a, um, a Sheffield United BAP, which I shouldn't have said, but I couldn't help it. I think it was McBurney BAPed in. Uh, he did yeah. BAP in. He did. Uh, and lastly, I've been having a set to and a throwing, a throwing with this bloke on Twitter called Chelsea FC Podcast. We all know there's only one Chelsea podcast, and it's called the Chelsea Fancast. Hear, hear. But we've been having some disagreement about Poch. He just seems like most of them who just slate Poch and say he's the reason we're shit and not winning and should be sacked and Jose should take over. What world does he live in, really? He must still be living in the Roman days. Apart from not acknowledging the fans, he isn't a bad manager. A cup final and a semi-final against City, I don't think that's a bad first season, to be fair. And we could still finish in the top seven with the games in hand on the teams above. So hopefully we beat City, go on to the final to play Coventry and win the cup. Very simple. Then European football will 100% be on the cards for next season, If we even if we don't finish top seven or eight, depending on what place it goes down to. All the best and up the fucking Chelsea, Michael LaBeouf Murray. Great email. I love your notes, Michael, if those, in fact, were notes. What do you think, JK? Yes, yes, good notes. Blimey. Yes, well, they, I, yes, yes. I loved all the Leeds bastards stuff, actually, myself. Bastards. 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 Bastard. Dirty bastards. Five-year-old. Um, uh, some of the players, I, I, which you're being who you're being enthusiastic about, uh, Michael, I can't uh, quite get in the same groove about. I'm afraid. Uh, jury's still out on a lot of them. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's the fact that they they play well and then they play dreadfully, and then they play well and they play dreadfully, and they play dreadfully and they play dreadfully, and they play well and then they play dreadfully. I can't can't quite deal with it. I'm afraid they're skittish. Yeah, you know, I think they're worse than skittish. I think they're shittish. Yeah, shittish, exactly. You're just shit. Um, George Spencer, the great George. Oh, George. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Uh, Liverpool nil, Atalanta three. <laughs> and uh, Zappa Costa's definitely got one assist for the first, I think. Oh, my God. He's not playing well for them, is he? Yeah. Well, I don't know. He, he got an assist for the first goal. Three nil at, at, at Anfield. Oh, how we laughed. Wow. Leverkusen have just scored against West Ham, so that's 1-0, but that's pretty good. If that stays 1-0, that's a pretty good result for West Ham. Yeah, because they're, uh, they're, unbeaten. they're all, unbeaten this season, aren't they? Yeah. 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 There's 85 minutes gone there, so, you know. Anyway, George Spencer. George Spencer. We're going to hear about Winchester City, George. How lovely. Dear Chigi and JK, it looks as though we might be turning our noses upwards. Nah. No. Following the draw at Brentford, it looked like Newcastle home would be a stern test. Thankfully, Jackson Palmer Mudrick, of all people, helped us to a win, despite our best efforts to mess it up later on. Then came the FA Cup tie against Leicester, which I followed from the London Festival of Railway Modelling. What a very good place to be following it from. Are you a railway modeler, George? He's, a, he's an enthusiast. You are. I commend you. I commend you. And after Cucurella, of all people, put us ahead, despite Sterling's best efforts, we look home and hosed. That's, somebody else just used that phrase. Home and hosed. I wonder where that comes from. Is it a horse imagery, do you think? Yes. Home and hosed by half Hosing time. the horses, isn't it? Yeah, homing the horses, yes. Then Disazis, Disazitrus. Oh, George. Oh, oh George. Oh. Thank you. Oh. Own goal. Allowed them back into the match before um, Mavidi's admittedly superb effort got them level. Extra time loon, but Carney Chukameka came to the rescue in spectacular fashion before uh, Noni Madueke finished them off in styles and added bonus. The wheels well and truly came off. Klopp's farewell tour. Fuggity bye. Hip, 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 hip. Uh, meanwhile, Winchester City, that's who we really wanted to hear, George. You citizens! Uh, yeah, citizens, come citizens! 
after another postponement, faced a pool town side fielding Kurt Zuma's brother. Weird. Um, what's his name? Zert. Zert Zuma. And won 4 0 in an absolutely Bert. dominant performance. I think Bert. it's Bert. Bert. Bert, Bert Zuma. Um, yeah. Not Kat Zuma. Oh, no, that's, that's bad taste. Sorry. And won 4 0 in an absolutely dominant performance, which means at the time of writing, if they win all their remaining matches, they will finish in a playoff spot. Yeah, but winning all the remaining matches. George, uh, they're about to take a penalty. Um, uh, no, they're about to take on penalty to Plymouth Parkway. No, I'm so sorry. They're about to take on penalty to Plymouth Parkway. Of course, what a lovely name that is. Uh, not at Parkway's ground, but at Argyles. Only I could have gone. No. Until next time, up to Chelsea. George Spencer. George, we love you, George. Well done, mate. Brilliant. Lovely to hear from you, George. Hope you're well. Uh, right, this is from Philip Rawlings. Hello to Lord Chidge and Duke of Kid. Thank you. I'm still coming down after Sunday. I must say that Mr. Sterling has got me swearing more than I ever have. Please, somebody tell me what possesses this manager to put two fingers up to the fans, not only playing him almost every game when he plays with no skill, no passion, and then is given authority to take penalties and free kicks at the expense of Cole. So back to Sterling, I must say, it was last match. I stood up in rage at another one of his amazing ineptitudes. And then on Sunday, it was so obvious he was going to miss the penalty. And I think he was volunteering to take England's penalty kicks at Twickenham when he took a free kick. As Del Boy said, what a plonker. And I know I do go on about this, but compared to the treatment of Mudrick, he seems to have stumbled on a new position for Mudrick playing more in the centre. And I think we can see the potential of the lad, but Poch seems not to want to praise him continue to not play him regularly and even on Sunday seemed to put him back wide in the second half to blunt his game again at the expense of Sterling. So when he subbed Mudrick, it was little wonder the crowd was in a rage at such a stupid decision. That's a really good point, actually. Oh, I think the verdict on the fan cast that initial boos were replaced by cheers as, as an apology to Sterling was a bit naive as from where I sat, it was booing at substitution then cheering Mudrick as he walked around the pitch. Well, that is quite possibly also a good point, Philip. I can we can only ever really go on on what's happening in our immediate vicinity, and and there was a lot of applause going on for him where I was. But yeah, maybe you're right. So, what's the betting potch? Despite all known form, will continue sticking two fingers up just by picking Sterney for the Burnley game. Well, he didn't, did he, J.K.? Nah, he did not. Nah. So, since the Cup final, it seems we've found our shooting boots, which has been essential as we've conceded two goals for the last four games. Not sure what the problem is, although I'm not completely sold on Dizazi, as he seems to have a mistake in him and he, can still, and he still can't cope with passing out from the back. Although, I think he took it to the extreme by passing back to the goal as opposed to a player. After hearing JK's ex explanation for passing out from the back, it seems we're just useless at it. For example, Newcastle had three players on the penalty area every goal kick. And even Leicester, who apparently don't press, cause panic to our goalkeeper. Still, if we take the Newcastle Cup game as a win, I think we have won 10, drawn one, and lost to Wolves in our last 12 home games. So some progress is being made. But going back to the Cup final, can you explain why remembering the reaction after Roman got sanctioned and our fans got condemned for chanting for Roman by the pious Lineker and the rest of the BBC pundits? The total silence of criticism for when that scum booed the whole of the national anthem with such disrespect? I don't think I heard one word of criticism said or written. It's so hypocritical. Very Still, true. Yeah, absolutely spot on. Still, I end my rant by remembering last evening when I saw the great Gianfranco Zola at Clapham. It was a great night reliving another era of Chelsea football we remember with such joy. And Gianfranco, being such a hero, took a picture with almost all who came and didn't start until 8.30. Best wishes, Philip. Well, Philip very kindly sent me the photograph of him with the great Jan Franco. That was a great pic, isn't it, JK? What a lovely picture that is. Isn't it lovely? Wow. Yeah. We can't show that to anybody. We can't do that, can we? No. Well, we can. It's, we've got it on the screen. So when they watch this as a as a YouTube... I'm so sorry. It's on the screen. No, it's, it's on I'm, the screen. See I'm that big photograph on the screen, JK? And, and, and that's Jan Franco and uh, Mr. Rawlings. Yeah. Sorry, I was looking at um, the, the notes. Indeed, indeed. Uh, very lovely. Thank you for sending that in, Philip, and, and the email. I, I have to say, JK, I, I'm, I'm really... They, they, there's another Zola thing going on, and, a, a, the, you know, the, the people are getting their act shit together with these, and I'm really upset because, you know, they're, they're, they're obviously in London, as you'd expect them to be, and they're in the midweek, and I just can't really get to any of them, you know? I feel a bit yeah. left out. 
I don't see them being advertised. I keep missing them. Well, I think this one was organised by the club because Cundy was the uh, compound, ah, wasn't he? Right, right. The, cl- right. the club are the club are encroaching on our turf. Have you noticed this? They're doing uh, like events like this, like with Zola, and uh, they're um, they're also doing a podcast, I believe. Um, the, Yank- the Yanks are after our dollar, mate. Um, yeah, good luck. Uh, so there you yeah, go. Anyway. Yeah, do you think there is? Um, they have as much drivel and pointless analysis as us, though. No, no. no. Only we can come out with drivel and pointless analysis. Absolutely right. Consistently for sixteen years. Uh, Mark Graver, greetings. The other day I visited my local off license or bottle store, as we call them here. Bottle right? store. No, but that sounds American, doesn't it? Okay, bottles, sorry. Yeah. I don't really can't do a New Zealand that unless it's unless it's fresh. Bit like that, isn't it? Bottle, bottle store, bottle that, store. That's South African. It, 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 right. All what I can do is this. bottle store. No, that's like the that. only kiwi yeah. I can do is fashion chips. Fashion chips, yeah, yeah. Fashion and, chips. I'm going to the jam. That's the other one as well. Going to the jam. Yeah, yeah. We used to have a. a, a I mean, I, I loved her. I really did love her. Actually, she was lovely. Uh, she was our production manager many years ago. She was called Cat, and she sadly died of cancer very young, not that long ago. And she was from New Zealand, and she was she was just lovely. And I, I because I, the way I used to make programs was basically I, I just it's like I gather everything around me and chuck it all in in a big corner to see what happens, you know. So I, I never had enough tape decks. Um, so I would always demand another tape deck, and uh, and and uh, and Cat because she was lovely and she cared for for me and the programs I was making. She would always come in in the morning and say, Chidge, Chidge, do you need another dick in the suite? <laughs> and, I, and I would always turn around and say, Cat, there are already two dicks in here. There's plenty, I think, referring to me and the editor, obviously. Oh, of course. Lovely. Do you need another dick in the suite, Chidge? Oh, I love her. <laughs> Bless you, Cat. Uh, you're up there somewhere. I love you to pieces, sweetheart. There we go. Uh, anyway, carry on. Do carry on. Don't mind Mark, me. <laughs> Mark Graver. Greetings. The other day I visited my off license or bottle stores, we call them here in New Zealand. There was a bottle of wine on the cash desk. It immediately reminded me of you. I attach a picture which hopefully can now be shared on the live, live broadcast. Boom, magic. <laughs> Funny enough, it's the King series. Bastard. Yeah, bastard. Bastard, bastard Chardonnay 2021. Bastard. Uh, Football. Oh, that I really don't know what to say about it anymore. He says, "Best wishes, Mark." Bastards. 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 Bastard wine. Oh, is this this is New Zealand wine, isn't it? It's it's Morisco, the King Series. Bastard Chardonnay. Yeah. Alluring aromas of melon, nectarine, citrus, and bastards. <laughs> no, and and a supporting court, a supporting oak background, create a vibrant, vibrant nose. nose. Stone, Stone fruit, fruit and mealy, mealy flavors carry mealy through flavors to the palate. To the palate. Which are supported by subtle flint and nutty notes from Bastard. <laughs> I love it. From Read more Bastards. Tax bastards. included Bastards. Bastards. Love it. Mark, you are a man after our own heart. That is a tremendous find. Uh, I'd love to drink a bottle of Bastard, see what it's like. I wonder if it would make you more of a bastard if you drank it. Probably. <laughs> Uh, right, this is from James Carey. Hi, all. Just woken up, hungover, and gutted post Burnley game. However, <laughs> The clocks have gone forward, the sun is shining, and for some reason my first thought is to get my Lampard ch- chant written down. Maybe it's because the atmosphere at Stamford Bridge is so dispirited. Anyway, to Park Life Blur song. I, th- this is going to be fun. All the trophies, so many trophies, they all go hand in hand, hand in hand with Frank Lampard. Yep, not bad. It's not difficult. Less moaning from the stands, more singing. I plan to send you a new chant as much as I can because I don't want us to turn into Woolwich. Cheers, lads. James in Frankfurt. Hi again. Okay, writing again about the lack of atmosphere. I always felt we needed not only new songs, but an anthem. We had one, but it never took off. I felt it's been just left by the wayside. We we should use it. It will rally the fans. Yes, it's long, but the tune is very well known. Okay, here it is. You will have heard it. The only fools and horses chant. He stuck a drug bar in his pocket. He stuck a drug bar in his pocket. We nick Glenn Johnson from West Ham. And if you want the best, and if you don't ask questions, then Roman, he's your man. Where it all came from is a mystery. Is it from the drugs or the oil in the sea? 
Come on, Chelsea, throw your celery, because we are the famous CFC. La 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 Not bad. Not bad at all. Isn't it? He stuck a dropper in his pocket, nicked a gun to throw my hand. Isn't it? If you want the best in the dance questions, then Roman is your man. Isn't it all a bit more? And if you want the best, and if you don't ask questions, then Roman, he's your man. Where it all came from is a mystery. Is it from the drugs or the oil in the sea? Come on, Chelsea, throw your celery, because we are the famous CFC. La 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 la. Not bad. Not bad. I like this line. Love the show. It's wonderful. I'll have some chance for our current players soon. James in Frankfurt. Yeah, we could do with some chance for the current players because they're not giving all the any chance. The, the away fans, bless them, seem obsessed with the home fans as well, singing all this past stuff from the songbook. I know. Bloody Wise song and the, the, the Williams song. They're great songs and you're the great at singing them, but bloody hell, we need to just find yeah, some. We need to have some players that deserve them for a start. There's, there's the problem. There's exactly the problem. We've got a Cole Palmer one. We've got a Conor Gallagher one. Isn't there a new Cole Palmer one, which I missed? Isn't, isn't there another one? They're doing a... Um, they did it the other day at Sheffield, apparently. Sign him up for eight more years. That no, one. no, no. There's another one. There's a new, a new one. Oh, Palmer, Palmer, Palmer. Ole, ole. Uh, yeah. Palmer again, isn't it? Yeah. It's like pretty simple. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty banal, isn't it? Okay. There's more from James, though. He's got a triptych of songs here. Oh, Hi, all. Just, <clears throat> excuse me. Just spent a wonderful Saturday night up in Sheffield. Uh, James, well done for getting to these away games, mate. That's uh, you, Considering you're in Frankfurt, that's a, that's a big ask. Well done, you. Uh, and I write this before the Sheffield United game. Anyway, a new chant, which is inspired by your Connor T-shirt, which I have duly purchased. Have you? Have you? Have you? Have you? James Carey. I don't think I've had an email from you. I shall check. Um, anyway. Right, here we go. Uh, it is to be sung to the Fun Boy 3 song. It ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. It's pretty straightforward, and I think it scans. Ready? Okay. Here goes. Sell Connor Gallagher, will fucking riot. Sell Connor Gallagher, will fucking riot. Sell Connor Gallagher, will fucking riot. Clear Lake, hands off. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Should it not James. Be, should it not be clear late, get your hands off at the end rather than clear late hands off? That would be better. Clear late, get your hands off. That would, just to scan it a bit more. But yeah, very good. Very good indeed. Try and start or, the one. I don't know how we try and start it. Or sell Connor Gallagher and Will fucking riot. Sell Connor Gallagher and Will fucking riot. Sell Connor Gallagher and Will fucking riot. Uh, and clear late, you can fuck off. Something like that. Clear late, you can fuck off. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Yes. It's not bad Very good. at all. Very good. Yeah, keep them coming. Keep them coming, James. Yeah, three, Blimey. three. It's over three. a space of time, but, you know, I thought we'll stick them all in together. Uh, well yeah, done, yeah. James. He says, keep up the fine work, lads. Cheers, James and Frank. Well, thanks, James. Well done, you. I'll check to see if I have, in fact, had an email from you. Um, I'm a bit worried that I haven't. Do do let us know. It's the Chelsea special at gmail.com, James, in case I haven't. All right? Okay, J.K. Tate Osborne. Hello, Tate. Hi, mate. Oh, Hello, Tiago Silva. <laughs> Don't you remember? Hello, he looks Chidge. like Tiago. I remember he does, yeah. Hello, Chidge and the kid. I like that. Thanks very much. I promise this mail won't be as long and winded as my previous email that sparked J.K. on a 10-minute referee rant and put Chidge to sleep. Yes, I did. Hooray! Let's get to... I put Chidge to sleep a lot. But anyway, we do sort of <sighs> drivel and pointless analysis, so it makes sense, I'll, I'll, do, it? I'll do my Roy, uh, Roy Hodgson impression. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, firstly, why don't you guys get journalists on the pod anymore? Because we don't mm, like them. Mm, no. No, I think they don't like us either. I remember <laughs> I, when I started listening to the fancast over a year ago. Liam Toomey and Adam Newsom are regularly on the show. Yeah. Adam Newsom is no longer a, a, a journalist; doesn't work for. No, no. Um, well, we should say actually, Adam Adam now works for Chelsea. Yeah, in their comms department. So it would be rather inappropriate for poor old Adam to to be associated with us. I, we love Adam. We love Adam so much, uh, Tate. Yeah. Just just so you know, actually, we should. I should. I should fess up. Sorry to butt in, J.K., but. 
Um, we love Adam so much. He is still in our WhatsApp group. And that's a privilege that has never before been afforded to somebody who's no longer on the podcast and is also and was also a journalist. But we do love Adam. Uh, Liam is still in our WhatsApp group, too. Uh, much to his benefit, I would suggest, because he yes, does get occasionally a... he interacts and asks us questions about stuff. Yeah. Actually. Um, th- 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 I mean, Liam, Liam. Li- okay, who, who do I who do I know and like as journalists? I mean, half half the problem here, Tate, is that I'm incredibly busy. I mean, I have nearly thirty clients a week, and I do the two podcasts, and I have an allotment, and I have to also try and sustain a marriage. One day you will understand, but. Uh, it's about time. I mean, I'll give you an example, right? I mean, for the last two weeks, I've known that we're playing Everton next Monday and therefore that we'll be doing an opposition view this Friday. And I have a great mate who is well known. He 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 is Comedy Dave, uh, used to be on Radio One, got his own shows and stuff. He's a very old mate. I used to work with him years ago and he's my go to Everton fan because he's lovely. Um, when do you think I contacted him to see if he could come on tomorrow night's show? Have uh, a guess, this, this afternoon. No, at seven o'clock this evening. Ah, so surprisingly enough, his answer was, "Chich, I'd love to, but I'm doing something." So this is my world, Tate. I, I'm just too fucking busy, and corralling this lot is hard enough. Let alone finding errant journalists. But I, I, I have many journalists who I like. Liam is my favourite because he's Liam's been with us from through thick and thin. And I, I and I will endeavour to get Liam on before the end of the, the season because we love Liam and he'll he'll happily come on. Henry Winter, another favourite journalist of mine, who's just had the uh, he's just been made redundant by the Times. Would you believe? We'll get Henry on. Uh, I, I'll I'll do this. I will promise you, Tate. I will try and get some journals on. But but Henry's another favourite. There are journalists that I will never have on this show. One is Matt Law, not because I don't like Matt, because I've met Matt a few times. He's a decent guy. And the other is Nizar Kinsella. And again, I, I've got nothing against Nizar. I, I've met him a few times. But they are very, very associated with Londoners Blue. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if you like, want to nick their picks. You know, I think I, I know people do that to us all the time. And I do get a bit fucked off with it, to be honest. But I don't really say anything. But I, I certainly wouldn't dream of doing it to other people unless there was a very good reason but there are other journalists that I know, plenty of them. So um, I, I, I'll have a think. It's, it's just really the, the bigger issue, really, Tate, is that I just don't have the fucking time to sort it out, mate. It's quite hard work organising this, and I'm just too busy in the week. Sorry, old bean. I will do better, though, for you. All right? Sorry, JK, to butt in. No problem. No problem. Um, uh, Liam was on at the very beginning of the season, wasn't he? And then... Um uh has written some very good articles for the athletic so uh um uh, and he does the straight out of cobham so he's a very busy boy as well anyway um next i wanted to mention how much of a disaster the decision making is at chelsea this isn't news but specifically i don't understand the recall of cassidy he's amassed like 30 minutes since returning well we've been complaining about that as well haven't we tate haven't we judge yeah. we've been saying how it's absolutely he came on at the end of the Sheffield United game and of course didn't challenge and the ball went through which is exactly what he did in the previous game he missed a challenge and they scored um, I, think they, I think they bring him on to allow the opposition an opportunity to equalise yeah it looks to me that that's entirely why he's been recalled to allow the opposition to score um, I agree he should have had a whole a full game um, it doesn't make any sense particularly since the, the others look as if they're a bit exhausted from time to time I don't get it at all apparently he was very good at Leicester Will we find out um, next season or will he play him towards the end of the season? Who knows with this bizarre football team? Um, anyway, he's amassed 30 minutes since returning. Pochettino continually complains about the lack of depth. You're right. You think a home match versus Burnley, exactly why we recalled Casadei, especially after an international break where Enzo arrived back from Argentina the night before kickoff. Gallagher played twice for England. I agree completely. Besides, why do we even recall him in the first place? In January, we recalled Andre Santos from his disaster loan at Forest. Once Santos was recalled, we also recalled Cassidy to the to then loan Santos to Strasbourg. Apparently, he's playing quite well at Strasbourg. Yeah. Uh, we knew Cassidy, so therefore, why didn't he play him at Nottingham Forest? 
Uh, once Santos was recalled, we also recalled Cassade to then uh, loan Santos to Strasbourg. We knew Cassade was cup tied, was finally getting into the Leicester team more regularly. I don't think Santos was cup tied because he barely got a minute at Forest. No, he wasn't. Just makes no sense to sever Cassade's loan at Leicester to play zero football for us. I absolutely agree. What it's worth, I thought Santos was more impressive during pre season than Cassade too. Santos was very impressive. Um, I thought Cassade is pretty good as well, but you know. Pre-season was such a bizarre um, perf- series of performances from us because he's never played that structure again. He's never pressed from the front, which he did in that pre-season. He, he obviously had Jackson playing left wing um, with um, and Kunku up front, which we've never ever seen a combination of properly because nkunku has been injured. He even played in the Caribou Cup final, apparently injured, which nobody knew about. I mean, it's been a disaster that whole thing. Anyway. Um, to add to the awful decision making, what's the point of signing these players when our academy players are better? Well, well, I, you know, I, I think one can go back to the the madness of of Bowley and Baghdadi going around and just treating the whole place as the whole thing as a as a toy shop and just buying whatever they wanted without analysing what was happening at the club at the time and who they were buying. Anyway, we know they're selling our academy players for fewer profit to balance FFP. But why even buy these players for crazy fees in the first place? Looking at Matson specifically, um, yeah, he's having a, a fantastic time in Germany. Um, Poch never tried him at left back. He was in the championship um, team of the season last year, instrumental in Burnley's promotion. Poch plays him sparingly at attacking mid and we ship him to Dortmund, who are in the Champions League, playing a higher level of football than us, by the way. Did he play in the Champions League the other day, by the way, Chid? Do you know? I didn't who? watch that one. Um, Matson. Um, uh, I don't know. And uh, he's starting at left back for them, performing as one of their best players. He's better than Poodle. In centre back, we bought Desazi and Badia Shield, Monaco's defensive partnership. Best believe we'll sell Trevor this summer, even though he's better than both of them. Agree completely, completely, Tate. He is better than both of them. He's not even just this regime. We've seen Tom- Tomori and Tammy go in the recent past, who would walk into our team at the moment. The trouble is, they wouldn't have walked into the team at the time. Um, but yes, if we'd had them now, they would have absolutely. As the same with Mark Gurhey as well and Livramento. Anyway, um, Mace is another who went. There was definitely a contract issue, but they certainly didn't flinch at the opportunity to get 60 million pure profit to help cover for the 200 million. They spanked. I think the expression is spunked. I think you're being polite on Caicedo. Uh, and Moises and Enzo. Uh, lastly, I wanted to add my opinion to your injury conversation from the pod the other day. You guys couldn't come up with a reason as to why everyone's getting injured now. I was listening to a podcast that had Peter Cech as a Peter Cech as a guest. He was talking about his success with Chelsea. He talked about how he knew he had to work hard to earn his spot ahead of Cudicini, who was playing well when he joined. Cech knew he had a fresh start, though, with Mourinho coming in and a new manager who will look at the entire squad as equals before he decides his eleven. We all know Cech was picked as the number one. The rest is history, as they say. Cech revealed, though, that for about 18 months he was playing with two broken shoulders. What? I believe it was during the 05 06 season where we won the league, also in the World Cup after that. I can't fathom how a goalkeeper can play with two broken shoulders, let alone as well as he did. He knew that if he didn't play, he'd lose his spot and couldn't let that happen. Bonkers. My theory is back then, players probably got injuries like they do now, but just play through them most of the time. It would be impossible for players now to be injured. It kept as a secret, especially with the data that predicts when a player is being overused. Any small niggle now is immediately flared and the player's out for two weeks. That's all up the Chelsea. Oh, Tiago Silva. Oh, and I meant to add, big thanks to Chidge as I've received my Kerry Dixon mini banner with a nice birthday note as well. Oh, I guess these mini banners do exist. They do, Tate. They do. And you've got one. You can thank your old man for that as well, Tate, because he, he sent me a little email saying it's your birthday. Happy birthday, by the way. Uh, he said, can you make sure you get it there before the date? And I, I worked my bollocks off to do that. So I'm so glad you received it. And uh, be lovely to see you again when you next come over to the uh, to the UK. Be lovely to see you. So there you go. Hope you're well. Uh, Michael Gibbon, dear Chidge and JK. And possible guests? Sadly not. No, uh, no. I'm writing to you after the Burnley game. That was a terrible match. Ah, yep. no, no, no shit, Sherlock. But, 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 perhaps not as bad as everyone has been Oh, saying. yes, it was. Oh, no, it wasn't. Oh, yes, it was. Oh, no, it wasn't. Bastards. Bastards. 
this question of what what's Poch saying to them at half time is more than just a little silly. I'm sorry, but this half time half time talk is just too silly. We're going to stop the stop the match now. Sorry, it's not Monty Python. It's yeah. just drivel and pointless analysis before and after the game. Yeah. Uh, what do people think he says? Right, lads, we're a goal and a man up, so we'd better let them back in the game. I, actually, actually, my, you know, Michael, I think he does do that. That's why he brings on Cassidy. No, I'm only joking. Uh, otherwise, this sporting event isn't very sporting and fraud is bad. The fact that we're so bad after half time is squarely on the players. Lots of people are saying that Enzo and Moises, Moises! Um, Moises aren't good enough or some version of that. But in my opinion, it's more that although they are good players individually, they do not suit one another very well. This actually, Michael, is a very excellent point. I have to say, I've been reading a fair bit about this. Uh, Enzo is probably best in a three and Caicedo in a two. Maybe I'm wrong. But these Brighton oafs we've gotten in to do the transfers haven't really covered themselves in glory. Side note, I'm a little surprised Enzo hasn't been compared more to Pogba. Both expensive, seemingly tactically out of place, the face of a moronic Yank ownership, both clearly very talented. I began the season with a genuine hope that we would be relegated. Really? I still hope that. Uh. Really? It would suck. But the only way to get rid of the cancerous uh, Clear Lake capital... Right, would be for there to be something disastrous happening. And before anyone says that they're legally obligated to stay for at least 10 years, these con men are definitely the sort to figure out some loophole to get rid of dealing with consequences. I have a very low opinion of these owners, and the sooner they go, the better. Dun, kind dun, regards, uh... dun, 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 kind regards, Michael. Michael, I really like that email. I mean, because it's it was challenging and thought provoking, and may well be right. And, uh, I mean, I think that's a bit extreme to want to get relegated, but I can see where you're coming from, I have to say. Yeah. Good on you, Michael. Hope you're well. Lovely email. Enjoyed that. JK. Would would would, um, would relegation force their hand? I think they'd they'd uh they'd have to rethink the ground development. Are they obligated? It's not part of their plan, is it? No, they're not obligated, are they, to 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 redevelop the the uh, no, it's not part they of the are. Plan. They, they are. are they are, aren't they? Yeah, they are. But you know, this is the thing. It's it, you know, um, it's not worth the contract it's written on, is the old expression, isn't it? I mean, I agree with him. They're clever enough to get all sorts of loopholes, you know, force majeure, that kind of thing. You know, who knows what's in the contract? You mean they'll try and burn it down? You mean? Who knows? Anything could happen. No, you know, the, as Joe Strummer used to say, the future is unwritten. Hey, he was a bit hey. deep, wasn't he, Joe? Hey, I love Joe. Without hey. people, we're nothing. You know when we won the uh, uh, football blogging awards or the FCAs or whatever they call them yeah. for the for the second time because I should remind everybody we've won it two times two times two, two times, times yeah two times uh, so when we when I when we picked it up for the second time and I was the only fan cast representative there even though I did ask them all to come uh, and I had flu and I picked it up wearing me whistle and flute and I. That's what I said in my speech. I'd just like to say to all the people who've listened to this show for the last, it would have been seven years by then, I think, um, you're all absolutely bloody marvellous and we don't deserve you. And as Joe Strummer said, without people, we're nothing. And then I just walked off. Wow. Like, you get, mic drop. Do you get clapped? No, everybody's like too busy getting pissed and to listen to what I was saying. But I felt good. 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 I'd have clapped you. Yeah. Um, Gabriel Ewan, dear Chidge and JK. Yes, it's us. It's us. Hope this email finds you both well. Yeah, I think so. We're both well, Chidge. Yeah, I think so. I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the very first email I wrote in, I thought the fan cast was too long. Oh, God. When I first discovered it, wasn't keen on listening to the whole thing. Don't blame you, mate. We're not keen on doing it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're thinking of shortening it to about 10 yeah. minutes, aren't we, Chidge? Yeah. Five. Make it, make it just like a daily fan bite. Yeah, exactly. Two minutes. Um, well, guess what? I think we need longer. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 of course, I'm happy with however long or short the podcast is. I guess I was just hoping for longer therapy sessions ah, uh. or simply more time for my frustration about the current state of the club to be released. So please continue what you're doing and don't let me keep you out of your bed. We are doing drive a drivel and pointless analysis. <laughs> I can't remember it. Um, 
but before... puckering, but puckering drivel. Yeah, yeah, that's and, it. and yeah, and pointless but, analysis. But puckering, yes, fantastic. If you want, if you want to listen, the best way to listen is to drink some sleepy time tea. Yep. Before continuing, I'd like to apologise for what I'm going to talk about because it might come across as be beating the dead horse. A bit of necrophilia with an animal never hurting anyone. Without further ado. <laughs> Without further ado, let's <laughs> don't ever do that again. I just a whole mug of a whole mouthful of coffee. I nearly anyway, carry on. But almost burnt your cock off. It did. Um, without further ado, let's beat the monkey. Sorry, let's beat the dead horse. Um, our beloved Mark Warren. He is beloved. He is beloved. Gabriel, lovely. You are absolutely right. He is beloved. He's a he, really he is with... lovely man. Lovely, lovely man. Yeah. He, he, I'll go further than that. He's the loveliest man in the entire Chelsea community that we know. Yeah, yeah he is. Absolutely gorgeous man. Um, our beloved Mark Worrell likes to describe Chelsea as glorious unpredictabilities. Um, I'm, I'm sorry to be, to be pedantic about this, but they were called gloriously unpredictable when I watched them with my father uh, in the early 60s. Because the the major thing was we would always beat the good teams and lose to the shit teams, and which appears to be happening at the moment. And that, that was ingrained in us in that Chelsea period. have been doing that since 1905. They have, since the 30s. That was also said about them then as well. Mm. Anyway, I must say, but Mark has, has, has re... I was going to say regurgitated it. No, he's, um, he, he's, he's reinvented it and given it all, you know, lovely little colorful lights fairy lights around it anyway however i must say it's more like inglorious predictabilities pr pr predictabilities we're predictably shit consistently naive and habitually scandalous yes i like that yeah first we play to the opponent's level occasionally show up to big games absolutely the same. yeah players routinely make the same mistakes yes an inability to defend set pieces is remarkable did you see that um review of the goal during the week was it ben jacobs who did it the review of this of the last goal somebody went went um moment by moment through mcburney's goal to see how absolutely incapable all the defense were how they I failed to to get the ball out of the penalty area when it was so easy just to head the ball um as far as possible away and also people not bothering to jump badia shield in particular had two opportunities to head the ball and failed on both Budrick. of them and Mudrick. Mudrick, but well, that's happened before in the past. Mudrick had before, it happened in the... Mudrick in the, beat into a header by the yeah. shortest man on the pitch. Yeah. Also, the Carabao Cup final, it happened. He was up against um, um, bloody... What you call him? Van Thingy. Um, uh, um, Van uh, Dick. Van Dick, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, we constantly forget to mark the back post. Rarely say type with their biggest threat. Burnley could have scored four, for fuck's sake. Burnley. Moreover, we love shooting at our own feet. De Sazi own goal, Caicedo. Moises! Moises! Get out of here! Feeble, feeble. Top of that, our concentration level drops every time we score without fail. We always let our opponents back in. Game management, we don't know any of that. I like this next bit. JK is right. We struggle at everything. We do! We do! This club is operating at the level of madness from top to bottom. United game is the perfect example. To be frank, I didn't have a scoring two goals in 20 minutes against United on my bingo card. However, I did have conceding two or maybe three goals on it. The naivety, naivety of our team is on full display. Sorry, that should have, I did not have a scoring two goals. I did have conceding two or maybe three goals on it. The naivety of our team is on full display. Clear that both teams don't have some of the foundation of football drilled into them. But we're the team who just likes to self-destruct. I've been very supportive of Pochettino since his appointment. I agree with Chid. He was definitely the best we could get at the time. But lately, more and more concerns have floated to the surface, like a turd, I suppose. Like a turd and, to, and a bog. And I have to question why we still couldn't get his team to play. He still couldn't get his team to play with a proper structure. We know this team has an average age of 23. I think most of us have seen the under-21 team of our very own Cobham Academy play better than that. De Sazi and Gusto both bombing forward and gifting Garnaccio the freedom of the universe to score their second is absolutely criminal. It's not surprising we look more solid at the back after Chalaber and Gilchrist came on. Cobham graduates, coincidence? Nope. I have to re reiterate, I've yet to be impressed by De Sazi. Well, you and all of us now. He's got passion and physicality. That's about it. Jason Cundy is absolutely right when he said you don't get to celebrate a tackle when you created the danger with a big mistake. It's true. That was phenomenal, wasn't it? But I like some something about it. I liked. I gotta be honest. That's you true. Know. That's true. 
I uh, find him very endearing. I, I, I like Dezazi, but more as a human being than a footballer, it has to be said. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I really like Gusto. Yeah, yeah, we all do, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the next line. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I like him as well. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, I really like Gusto, but he's... <laughs> I was going to uh, phone phone your girlfriend. I was like, can you just poke him with a stick or something? He's stuck. She, I did, I got stuck. But she came in with a tea. It, it diverted me. It distracted me. I really like Gusto. I, I, I really like Gusto. I, I, I really like Gusto. I, <laughs> but he's beginning to show over-aggressiveness on the attack and forgetting his defensive duty. You could say that, but I think nah. he's been... I think he's, he's right. been a good player. Then again, what is Poch doing here? Did he give his team too much freedom to play instead of knowing when to attack, when to control the tempo of the game? Feels like an overtime hockey game of three on three back and forth instead of a well-managed team. It was. It was like watching basketball, wasn't it? There's no controlling element whatsoever. As dysfunctional as a club as United is, they played much better than us after going 3-2 up. Perhaps Poch should have subbed on silver for Badi Shield after 20 minutes. Speaking of Badi Shield, he's clearly not himself, at least not like last season when he played alongside Silva. You're absolutely right. He played a lot better, didn't he, Chid, last season? Yeah. Forget Silva. He looked composed with some good outlet passing. I couldn't remember a single successful long pass from him in this game. Oh, he didn't do any. Both him and De Sazi constantly giving United the ball back. Yes, extremely frustrating to watch. Poch said before the game, it's good to play with the same team so they can have some consistency. Well, they were consistently shit. You're right. He's always, that's what he's written. <laughs> well, we're consistently shit. We don't need to see the same centre-back pairing again. Chalaba has to start if he's fit, which is what you said earlier, Judge. He has to start. Uh, Palmer's perhaps the only positive on the pitch at the moment. Absolutely agree. I'm so impressed with his ability to contribute despite being the opponent's focus. Clear that players look to him when we need something, anything. He's always trying and producing, quickly becoming a leader of the team. Sterling, take notes. In my eyes, not only is he our player of the season, he should also be PL young player of the season. Well, it's a great possibility. I agree. I think he's been absolutely fabulous. But by the way, never, ever let anyone else take penalties. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, great Chelsea teams in the past have always had a spine from Drogba, Lamps, JT and Czech to Costa, Fabregas, Cahill and Courtois. Right now, only Palmer fits that profile. James, if he can stay fit. You must find the others who want to be competitive. This moment, Clear Lake has set us up to fail with how they operate, especially the transfer strategy. Perhaps after spending another two billion on kids, we'll find our spine eventually. Madness. Perhaps I'm the only one, but after the Burnley game, I've got a feeling our team might have accepted their mid-table, given where they are the entire season. It's like when you're locked in a completely dark room without any light long enough, you start to lose your vision. Do you? I didn't know that. Um, I don't blame them because quite a few of them are really just mid-table level. However, I'm glad to see they never stop playing for a win against United. We've been saying how ridiculous it is. We keep losing points to this historically bad United team for several years. It's absolutely hilarious, though, to imagine United fans saying the same thing about us after this win. Side note, feel bad for Mason Mount for being booed. Personally, I really like Mount. I think it was extremely unfortunate he didn't work out at Chelsea. But I guess that's what you get for going to United. Good luck, you wanker. Very good. I like that. Um, with FA Cup, the only real hope for silverware, despite how slim it looks, we'll have to play out of our skins, hope for some incredible luck. I know I can count on and who I can't. One thing for so sure, Chelsea and its inglorious predictabilities will bring a roller coaster ride of drama. Welcome to the new Chelsea. Madness. Up to Chelsea, Gabrielle. Good mail, mate. As always, very good stuff. Well done. Fantastic. Yeah, lovely to hear from you, Gabriel. And by the way, I know I know that Gabriel has ordered a Connor T-shirt because I got his email the other day. So uh, I'm I will be process. I'll be sending all that off to Tim this week to process, and hopefully you'll get it in a couple of weeks or two. So well done, thank you for that. Right there you go. Uh, it's been emotional, as Vinnie Jones might say, but uh, that is all we have time for tonight. Uh, now. JK and myself will be back with the absolutely brilliant Clayton Beerman, the housewife's choice, this Friday night, tomorrow night, in fact, to preview the match against Everton on Monday night. And uh, and while we're on that subject, um, breaking news, we're playing on Monday night. Uh, I work until really late on Tuesday night. Uh, Wednesday night, I have something else planned. So we will therefore not be doing the traditional review show on Tuesday night. So what I'm going to do is we will review the Everton game on Friday night. So we'll have a bumper show next Friday. 
a week tomorrow. Uh, so we will be reviewing the Everton game and previewing the FA Cup semi-final against Manchester City. Do you get that, JK? Um, we're not doing Tuesday. No, because it's just too much for me, mate. You know, I can't, I can't, you know, it's too much. So I'm not going to. Uh, we could do it on uh, we could do it on Friday. So there we go. Um, right uh, now, a quick shout out about in off the post. If you do want your email or your Patreon or Instagram or Facebook message or tweet or whatever read out, uh, but preferably an email because it's an email show. What you have to do is you have to email chelseafancast at gmail dot com. Very very simple. Uh, you can follow the show on all the social media at Chelsea Fancast. Uh, me at Stamford Chidge, Jonathan at Jonathan Kidd, uh, and that's it because it's just me and him tonight. So there you go. JK, it's been marvellous, simply marvellous. Very good fun. The evening with you. Very good fun, Chidge, indeed. You yeah. enjoyed it tonight, did you? Yes, of course. Always do. Yeah. Yeah. Always great emails from our brilliant, brilliant listeners, aren't they? Yeah. They are indeed. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Always excellent stuff. Good. And I'm glad that they listen. I'm glad they have opinions, and I'm glad they, they yeah. communicate them with us. Well done. Wherever they happen to be in the world as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the lovely thing. We get them from all over the world. So well done, you lot out there. I hope you've enjoyed listening and watching this. So thank you. Thanks for listening and watching. See you on Friday. Until then, keep it blue, keep it carefree, and keep it chill. See you up the Chelsea. 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 Come on, you boys against the Tuffins. Ah.